least not enough of them. I forgot a few sections uh, that we need to talk about. Draft thickness analysis using any brush, any brush to extract, not just extractor, using history recall to store all poly paints on patchy, uh, since I did that kind of weird, and then uh, infinite depth. And I'm just going to take another quick spin through here. We've got the cam view thumbnail we talked about, which is, I'm going to go ahead and bold that. Um, <clears throat> so you're in here, you got your star, you got your cam view right here, which we made yesterday, and then we got our thumbnail over here, which you can play around with, which is good times. Thumbnail, blah, 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 extractor brush. I think we had everything in the extractor brush we needed to talk about. Minus the fact, um, turn the off in a strip, get better details. I guess we can follow up with that just a little bit more. So I'm going to go out of edit mode and hit control N to clear my canvas. And let's go back to, uh, let's grab the cylinder. Go into edit mode, make polymesh 3D, control D to subdivide. And so now we have the standard brush and we're going to go over here and we're going to do our uh, sculpting again. Let's go ahead and crank our lazy radius up. That's under your stroke lazy mouse and then tap L to turn it off. And like we did last time, you can go through here and you can start sculpting. You can do shift one if you want to repeat that stroke, uh, however you want to do your little patterns here. Now you can go into BXT and that goes into the extractor brush or BX uh, extractor dot extractor <clears throat> extractor dot extractor drag rect. And these are just stroke types. Um, drag rect, the ex drag rect extractor is a little bit different in that when you hit G, which again is under your alpha menu, you actually grab just a radius of alpha so that when you use it again, again, if you're going to do that type of stroke, consider not doing it on a curved surface because it's going to want to also get the curvature of your object. Um, however, if you have, ooh, do we? UV map, morph UV, let's try this. So if we morph our UV here and then we do uh, drag rec, let's see how this does. It looks like our UVs kind of, <clears throat> they're not well, super well laid out. Oh, we returned a little bit. G, capture it. Yeah, it's not doing a great job. Uh, so let's go ahead and morph our UV back. Uh, but anyway, like I was mentioning, uh, B, brush, X, T, extractor brush, and then uh, hit G. And you can change the size while you're in G mode as well, just in case. And then uh, just go ahead and tap, and then just kind of go along your stroke here. And it'll go ahead and strip out your alpha, and then you can go ahead and use those. Uh, so, But that's in the extractor brush. All that is is making, well, that's not all it is, but it's making your stroke a certain way and then uh, putting some more settings in here under your modifiers. So for example, if we have our standard brush, oh, by the way, we've got our alpha over here. Hey, everybody. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, man. From the Ukraine. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, we're, we should have some fun today. I don't have a lot to go over with, uh, as far as just follow up from the ZBrush stuff. Just a few little odds and ends that I that I missed. Um, one of them, like this one here, uh, well, you can use the extractor brush. You can also use any brush. So even your standard brush can be an extractor brush. I'm going to do um, Shift One again just to kind of repeat my stroke, and we'll kind of put some dots in a row. And then G Alpha uh, from brush. If I just hover over that, you're going to see Create Alpha from Current Brush Stroke. If you hold down Control, just like anything else in ZBrush, it'll give you a big long explanation of it sometimes. Uh, and then with our standard brush, we can now go through here and I'm gonna, again, I'm going to turn off that um, line cursor to surface, preferences, edit, uh, line cursor to surface is somewhere in there, and that'll allow me to uh, get a better read without this cursor flip flopping all over the place. So uh, G, drag, and now essentially I have a standard brush. Uh, that does that. However, it's not really set up to do this repeating stroke. It's set up like the standard brush. You're going to have to go in here. Um, you're going to have to go in here to stroke, roll, and that'll kind of get you started. There's a few more settings as well. And like we went over yesterday, if you want to practice this, go into um, Alt S is what I have my standard brush set to as my hotkey. And then you can also go into BXT. I'm just going to go in here to my extractor brush. I'm going to sign that. Hold down Control Alt and click. And I'm going to do Alt Z. Uh, so I can go between Alt Z and Alt S, and I can kind of switch between those. And with that, I can I can see if there's any differences. So if I go Alt Z, Alt S, no differences in the alpha, it looks like. But if I go into the brush settings, uh, we go in here to maybe say uh, the curve. And then we go Alt Z, Alt S. 
Uh, looks the same. Let's go to samples. Alt Z, Alt S. Let's go into orientation surface modifiers. Looks the same. You know, honestly, I thought there would be more differences. Auto masking, this might be directional. Yeah, so uh, the extractor brush has directional turned on. Um, Alt S does not. So you can go, oh, the extractor brush does it. So if we turn on directional for our uh, standard brush, it might work a little bit better. Also, underneath our stroke is some settings you need to check, chest, you need to test. So again, Alt Z. Um, Extractor has lazy mouse turned on. Let's go ahead and turn lazy mouse on for our standard brush. Uh, lazy step is set to 0.1. Let's go ahead and set our 0.1. Lazy radius is set to 15 on our standard brush, but that's just because uh, that's where we set it. So you can kind of leave that on or off. But you know what? For a standard brush, we'll go ahead and drop that back down to 1. So now your standard brush should behave a little bit more like the extractor brush uh, in that sense. And then, of course, you can always hold down Alt if you want to do an invert of that. And one thing we kind of glossed over is when we were in our alpha settings yesterday. Let's do another test here. Undo. Undo. Uh, you can also drag through your undo slider, go a little bit faster. So I'm going to go this away. And uh, we did some Frankenstein stitches the other day on our Frankenstein head um, that we kind of modified. But I'm going to go through here and I'm going to do a uh, stroke like this. So if you go to BXT and you hit G and you just kind of drag along here, if you go all the way from end to end, uh, it's going to leave a gap on either side. So it's going to kind of do this, like do, do, do. And if that's what you're looking for, great. Don't worry about it. Um, however, if you wanted to, let's go ahead and, um, and you know what, let's go ahead and pull out like a, whoa. <laughs> let's go ahead and reset our, in fact, we can always go over here to brush, go all the way down here to the bottom. And you can do reset all brushes. So we got our standard brush here and we'll kind of lift that up here on either side and we'll hold down shift to smooth. Uh, you know I'm a big fan of smooth stronger which we glossed over that too in yesterday's live stream under here brush. You're gonna have uh, smooth brushes in here and there's a smooth stronger you can load that up and then you can also go in here to your brush or you can go in here to your brush settings and under your smooth brush modifiers you can change your weighted smooth mode to one. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, but however, if I capture this and I don't go near the end, so B, X, T, G, and they kind of go from here to here. Um, now it's going to capture and it's going to be a little bit more repeating because it's going to be the same on both sides. Uh, however, if I go into my alpha and we have our uh, from brush here, so if I hit G, we talked about making the alpha width to get more uh, detail to make the brush wideness kind of set a little bit higher. Uh, we were doing that when we were doing our scan data to capture more um, photo scan detail. Uh, but the, there's a blur seam as well. So if you take this blur seam and you set it down to zero, and then you go through here and you kind of grab this extraction, uh, and then you start using it, you're going to see in between here, you're getting a little bit of a hiccup, hitch, hitch. It's kind of giving you a line along here. That's because at the other at the, uh, at either end, it's not blurring it. So uh, if if you're getting that, oh, another thing too, I totally forgot about is you can hold down Shift if you want to get a straight line. Uh, you can do that when you're drawing things out, uh, which might actually help. So if you hold down uh, Alt and then Shift, it'll snap to the end. And if you go into your stroke menu here, uh, your if your lazy radius is very high. Um, it might stop quite a bit short, so you're going to want to go in here and make that lazy radius a little bit lower. And then when you hold down shift, you'll get a nice straight line. So if I wanted to do, hold down alt, kind of, oops, cut through. Uh, another thing you can do, since this is just snapped this way, you can uh, turn off lazy radius just by tapping L and hold down alt. And then you can just kind of go through and hold down shift. It'll snap to your camera view. Uh, if for some reason you wanted to hit W to go into move mode, hit Y to go into transpose mode, uh, you can actually do that from any angle. You just change your camera view. So if I wanted to go a line from like here uh, in this direction, I can just hold down control and tap that white um, dot right there. And then when I go in here, I can hold down alt and then just hold down shift and that'll just snap it. So my camera angle is gonna dictate 
where that straight line goes. So that can come in handy sometimes if you don't want to use the lazy snap. So for in this instance, I can just hold down shift as, as opposed to getting that line. And then I can go in here and um, we can maybe use our pinch brush. So if I want to capture this, BXT, G from brush, let's go ahead and turn our blur seam up to uh, let's say 25. Put it back at this uh, original there. And then now when I start capturing this, we can hold down shift and then just boom, straight line, nice straight alpha. And then now we got sweet. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. I'm already way behind. So if I miss anything, just keep shouting that out. Uh, where can I find the Magic Folds Brush and Marvelous Stream? That is from www dot zbrushguides.com there's a drapery tutorial in there and we can go over that too guys if you guys want uh, you talk about zbrush guides but nothing there uh oh this one uh, I mean let's see let's do um <clears throat> Let's do ZBrush glides. Do ZBrush glides cloth in uh, in Google, I guess. <laughs> that'll that'll take you here. And uh, just it's a course by Pablo Minos Gomez, and it comes with brushes and stuff like that. You talk much slower, and you're not limited to one hour. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially yeah, my CGMA feedback. I usually we do a live QA for like an hour, and I go. I tend to go pretty nuts. Um, from Rome, everybody's from all over the place. That's why I kind of like streaming super early in the morning. Uh, everybody in America is asleep. Um, get a get a little bit more uh, diversified crowd here. Uh, how can I keep UVs after I give thickness with an edge loop option to my Marvel Designer model? I mean, edge and back faces, and will that work on morph UV options? Um, as long as, well, yeah, you're right. I'm not sure. Let's let's do a, let's say we have UVs, like this plane here, and we go into Make Poly Mesh 3D. Let me go ahead and close that down. And so we got this, and then we're going to go over here, and we have, let me just do verify. We have UVs. We can morph our UVs. Yay. And then uh, if we go through here and we say, okay, I want to do a, hmm, let me think about this. So there's a couple different ways we could maybe do this. So we're going to go in here to QMesh, Polygroup All, and we're going to kind of push through here, and then we'll go in and flip. And then we still have UVs, so let's see what our UVs look like. I'm just going to do, instead of doing a Morph UV, I'm going to go in here to our Texture Map, Create, New from UV Check. Uh, Overlapping, and I think we got. Well, maybe I will do a morph UV. <laughs> uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Let's go unmorph UV. Morph UV. Oops. Hmm. Yeah, it's doing something weird with my UVs. Um, we can try doing. Let's do this. So we have our um, our mesh here. If we do possibly, I'm just kind of guessing here. A uh, let's try a morph target, store morph target, and then we'll hit Y to go back out of that mode, transpose mode. We'll go ahead and go back. Actually, let's go forward a little bit just so I don't have to flip it. And I'll say create diff mesh, and then now let's see. Do I still have UVs? So we have UVs still. Okay, uh, I still have UVs, and it looks like they're just kind of overlapping UVs. It does some really bizarre stuff. I'll give you that. Um, What you could do, if you don't care about your thickness UVs, like the UVs on the inside, what you could do is, um, it's going to be kind of weird, and it's super hacky, and there's probably a more elegant method for this, but um, let's go back to our polyplane here. 
yeah, so there's our polyplane. What you could do is you have the polyplane here. So what I'm going to do is go over here to Subtool, and we're going to go over here to duplicate this off. So we know these UVs are fresh. So I'm going to take this thickness here, and I'm going to go back, and we're going to say QMesh Polygroup All, and we're going to pull this back. And I don't care about these UVs, so we're going to go ahead and say Flip. And then these front UVs are good UVs, I know that, so I can go ahead and delete that out of my duplicate. So I've got good UVs and then UVs I don't care about. So if I go to this good UVs here, so if I, well, first let's go to the UVs I don't care about, and I'm going to go ahead and say <clears throat> Z plugin, UV master. And we're going to go over here to, uh, yeah, it's symmetrical, I guess. We can turn on polygroups, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say unwrap. So now these have UVs on them. And then these also have UVs on them. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say merge, weld. When I merge these things down, you can also just weld the vertices after. Um, but now we can just go ahead and say merge down. Keep our UVs. And if you wanted to merge after, all you'd have to do is go into your geometry modified topology uh, weld points, wherever that is. Weld points and the weld distance, geometry modified topology for you. And then now if we go over here, and we say uh, flatten, no UVs exist for this model. Oh, you know what, I'm stupid. Turn on the UV option, not the weld option. You need to do both. <laughs> uh, let's try that again, just because I'm interested now. So uh, go in here, plane 3D, edit, make polymesh 3D. We know this has UVs. We're gonna go to subtool. These are my good marble designer UVs. We're gonna duplicate this off. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna say QMesh polygroup all. We're gonna pull this back, we're gonna Display properties flip. We're going to get rid of the area we know we have good UVs. We're going to delete hidden. We're going to go over here. We're going to unwrap. So now these have UVs and this has UVs. We're going to merge these down. We want to weld and keep our UVs. Merge down. Go over here to unwrap. Oops, don't go to unwrap. Go over here to flatten. And now you can see you have um, both UVs. It should keep both UVs, hopefully. Did it keep my unwrap? Uh, See, this is what happens when you stream when you're tired, is uh, you make dumb mistakes, like hitting unwrap instead of flatten, which you did twice. Anyway, uh, that should keep your UVs, and then you can go in there and you can move your UVs around. Uh, when's a Houdini tutorial? Whenever I'm good at Houdini, um, I'm pretty dumb in Houdini. So watching me do another, well, I do have a Houdini tutorial, just in case you didn't know that. Um, or anybody following along who's not aware, I have a great big Houdini tutorial. It's mostly game dev tutorial stuff, game dev tool set. So you can go through here and you can make your own game reses and string some nodes together and all sorts of cool stuff. I always wanted to know why you were standing uh, to work. Uh, it's just a little bit easier in my setup and my green screen and stuff. And uh, you know what? I sit on my butt all day long, so it's kind of nice to stand up for a couple hours. Um, do you know when PixelLogic is going to finish peel UV and add to ZBrush? I have no idea. I'm just a, I'm the Brian Fellows of ZBrush. I'm an enthusiastic young man. You'll have to ask those guys. Um, how do you know if Lazy Mouse is on or off? Uh, for me, if I go into my standard brush, for example, and I'm using it, um, what I do is I go into my custom menu here, which is my path custom. It's set to Alt-A, and I can see if my Lazy Radius is turned on. But underneath Stroke, uh, your Lazy Mouse, this is where it is. So you can go into Stroke Lazy Mouse and see if it's on. Um, if it's on and it has a Lazy Radius of 1, it can sometimes be hard to tell. But if it's obviously like something like this, it's, it's pretty obvious that Lazy Mouse is on. Uh, once you create an alpha with the extractor and then create a new one, does the previous remain or does it override the old, older instances? Uh, yeah, it's still around. That's a good question. So let's go back over here. Um, let, me, let me see where we ended up with that. Oh, yeah. So we were using a, a just a standard brush to make it behave like an extractor brush. Uh, but yeah, if we go over here and we use our uh, extractor brush on this, BXT, and then G. Yoink. Uh, then we go in here and we got this alpha. We can also go through here. Uh, we have all of these alphas available to us. So if you wanted to like save a brush out, like say like, oh man, this alpha we did here was delightful. Uh, you can go in here and you can say brush save as. You can also, if you wanted to, you can say, um, let's go here to alt uh, brush, alt selection. Am I crazy? Oh, select icon. <laughs> 
Uh, you can also save an icon, so whatever is on your canvas, so it'll go ahead and save a new icon for it, and then you can go in. Well, probably before you did that, ah, it's not a big deal. You, it, it's not going to overwrite your extractor brush, but uh, you could always clone this off as, an, as its own brush. So then you have, as you can see, extractor one. So now it's sitting down here. Your extractor brush will be left alone. You can go in here to brush, save as, and then if you wanted to um, always have it like Z Startup Brush Presets. So every time you load up ZBrush, just put it in your ZBrush version, start up ZBrush Presets. Uh, or if you want it to uh, just be in your light box, you can grab it every once in a while. That's when you want to go into your ZBrush version and then go into your Z brushes and then that's going to be when you hit the comma key you can just load it in through here so if you use it all the time load it up with zbrush if you just use it every once in a while um, like these cloth brushes we were talking about earlier um, magic folds then um, you can go through here and you can uh, you can do that you can just grab them every once in a while uh, best way to fix retopologize mesh and zbrush like dynamesh zero Remesh gives some artifacts, non-manifold things, which are a pain in my to fix them. Any permanent solution? Um, uh, it depends. A lot of times for me is depending on how clean my Dynamesh is. If you have a, I would say lower the resolution on your Dynamesh so that you don't get a lot of. Uh, I'm I'm just guessing here, but like if you have a Dynamesh and it's got like areas that are like this. And you've got like just like crazy holes and overlapping geometry, and you may not even see it. It may be like, oh, my Dynamesh is great, and then somewhere back behind a fold, there's a a little area like this. It's gonna pick up. Zero mesh isn't going to change any of this. It's gonna think you want to keep all this, and any flipped faces in here and your crappy Dynamesh geometry is gonna want to fix or it's going to want to capture all of that nasty detail so in that case I would say lower your Dynamesh resolution if you can uh, or if you know you have any problem spots go into um, Sculptures Pro and then just clean it up a little bit uh, and then zero mesh what shouldn't give you non-manifold geometry uh, infinite depth yeah we're gonna to get to that um, and I think we can do that right now. So let's talk about infinite depth. And I haven't used this one a lot, so I'm going to use the same uh, demo that everybody else is doing. So I'm going to go into my dog here. And so, for example, we have a dog. And we have perspective turned off. And we have, we have, we can have X symmetry turned on. So now this can kind of behave like infinite depth. I go to the side here. I can like move this forward. I can move this back. And it's like, oh infinite depth because I move this back this side goes back however when I go to the front here uh, it's not going to be grabbing that back leg and even if I were to go to my transform menu and I was like okay let's do transform X and Z because the Z axis is this way uh, we put this out there um, my Z axis based on the bounding box of this object uh, it doesn't know that this leg is also kind of where I want to pull that leg so it's not really going to behave that well even if we turn on local symmetry uh, it's not going to make it so that's where infinite depth, depth, depth <laughs> infinite, infinite depth comes in. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Sorry. Let's see here. Um, and I don't remember the icon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go in here to the brush, and I think under the depth menu, infinite depth turn it on and then now when I go to move you're gonna see that brush is going to select all the way straight through so make your brush size a little bit smaller if you don't want to grab let's see how that works with our I haven't tried this yet but auto masking uh, topological yeah brush size big okay yeah so use that um, with your topological and it won't necessarily grab I mean it kind of maybe will depending on how close it's going to leave that alone, but if you have topological off, it's going to want to grab that tail. So yeah, you can still use a topological brush and infinite depth, and now you can go all the way through, kind of move straight through. Um, and, and that'll work for anything, and I think it is global. Let's see, depth. Oh, maybe not. So we got our move brush with infinite, infinite depth turned on, and then our inflate brush is off. So for move brush, we'll turn that back off, and then our inflate brush, we'll turn it on. And then now when we go through an inflate, we're going to inflate all the way through our object. 
so there's that. Cool. Uh, let me turn that off here. Draft analysis. We haven't got to that. Use any brush extractor. Infinite depth we covered. History recall brush. We did photogrammetry cleanup. Uh, alpha and texture. We did that with the rope and, and such. Uh, poly painting mask adjustments. It's cool. We already did that. Deco brush. Brushes. So uh, actually, we didn't do all of this. <clears throat> If we go in here and we subdivide this up, we talked a little bit about B, D, uh, deco curve drag dot and deco curve dots. Actually, I guess we did we did talk about this. So the drag dot here is, uh, let's go back into our transform menu. Here. And we can go in here to our uh, activate symmetry, which is to go across the X, X axis. So here we have a curve. And then this is the drag dot version of this is just going to pull that alpha along. And then the other version of our deco curve dots is going to change it to a dot stroke. And now it's just going to repeat uh, that stroke along a curve. Uh, you can also have RGB turned on and you can also have a texture turned on here. And let's actually go into our texture and we'll, ah, that should be good. And then we'll go in here and turn our poly paint on. So now, uh, you can drag a poly paint through as well, and then you can also switch it back to the deco curve drag, and then with that alpha and that texture, you can tap off. And these curves act just like any other curve, and we'll turn on RGB. And we, if you have the alpha, new alpha button turned on, it'll keep your alpha contained. If you turn it off, it'll go ahead and just make it all the way across with complete disregard to your alpha, which comes in handy when you're doing like skin painting and anything like that where you want to disregard your alpha or any photogrammetry cleanup stuff. Um, also, let's turn that Z intensity down. And it seemed like there was something else. Mm -hmm -hmm. You can also just turn Z add off. And then if you wanted to kind of go through, oh, also uh, when we were doing that cloth sculpting, you can change this alpha out. So you don't have to use that. You can use like alpha 01. And then if you wanted to do like a clothy, oops, let's turn Z add back on. RGB off and kind of go through here. And the cool thing about this is it's like, it's kind of like non-destructive. So if you want to go through here and change your Z intensity on the fly, uh, if you want to make it Z sub, you can just kind of flip it around. So you can go ahead and tap off. And then if I want to do another curve above that, and you can also hit six if you want to kind of smooth your curve out a little bit and then turn that back to Z add. And now you've got a um, nice, nice curve sculpting. Cool, hey from India. Is there any variance to do smooth edges in ZBrush for Gamers model without going to Maya? Um, var any variance to do smooth edges in ZBrush? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by variance. Um, like you're talking about like here's a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D, go in here to um, your crease menu, geometry crease, and then you can do like just a crease tolerance, and then you can go into uh, dynamic, which is under geometry dynamic, and you can do like crease level of three, smooth sub of four. And, or maybe crease level of two, smooth sub dub of five, and you can get those kind of smooth edges. And then if you wanted to, you could apply those. Um, do it all in pipeline for a gamma model and zebras. Oh, um, are you talking about um, soft and hard edges? Uh, you can kind of, eh, not really. You can, on FVX export, you can tell it to be all soft or all hard, but there's no like harden your UV borders and soften all your other low res model. There's nothing like that. But you can make them all soft on FBX export. And uh, by the way, just in case you miss it from last stream, if you go in here to the export menu now, uh, you can just export FBX right out of this menu. So for example, if you go to FBX export and save it, uh, you'll see in here and then S normals is turned on. And then S normals amount. Hmm. I wonder if you can set that to angle. I'm not sure if this is setting it to angle or not. I'm not positive, but you smooth normals with 100% is going to smooth all of your normals. This, I'm not sure if it sets it by normal angle or what that's doing, but you can do some tests with that and see if that'll do it. Uh, what's the A next to the MRGB stands out for? Yeah, if you guys missed, let me go ahead and here, let's do this. So go to my, <clears throat> Actually, here, go to my playlists. 
And then you're going to see live stream full episodes. We got the Zverse 2020. So yesterday we streamed, and I put this on my uh, channel here. <clears throat> so if you go here, you can see all the all that stuff. So yeah, essentially that would just be us go ahead and clone our standard brush, standard brush off, and then you go in here with like say drag rect and a brush alpha and a texture, and then when you drag that out, oops, let's go ahead and apply those. So here, let's go ahead and take our focal shift down. So we're getting a nice uh, alpha on here. We'll go ahead and turn our poly paint on RGB. And now you're going to see with the alpha on, it'll constrain it to there. Or if we don't want that, it'll... So when we start doing, we'll go from substance back in here with some skin stuff, and you'll see why that's important. Uh, Deco brush in ZBrush 5 worked really well for fur. How does the new one work? Uh, I don't know. I never used the Deco brush for fur. Let me see. Brush, Deco, Deco like this thing. Um, and I guess it kind of helixes along, so you could swap this alpha out for... I mean, the only thing with the deco curve brush is you get a curve with it. And then if you wanted to set up the twist, uh, if you guys don't know how the deco brush works. Um, and I'm not 100% positive, but somewhere in here there's... Uh, it's been a while, I should say. Uh, orientation, you have a spin angle and a spin rate, so you can kind of spin stuff around. Uh, twist doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of spin some stuff around. So I suppose, let's we go into like here to brush deco, uh, drag dot, and we say grab um, an alpha, and we pull that along. If you did a spin center, say 0.25 and a spin rate, I'm not sure what it'll do, honestly. Yeah, not much. So, at least not on that version. I suppose if you trade, maybe you curve dots. Spin center, spin rate. Yeah, it's kind of flipping out a little bit, but um, I don't know how useful that would be. Um, let's see, oh, okay, it just snapped me all the way down to the bottom, so I'm going to miss a bunch of stuff. Um, cool. Can you explain a 3D printing workflow very quickly? Uh, I'm not a, I've never 3D printed anything in my life, so I won't be able to give you much. I mean, I've had stuff of mine 3D printed, uh, but I've always sent that to Hong Kong, and they've done it there. So uh, we can talk a little bit. Yeah, so some of the new stuff we're going to talk about is like the draft analysis and the thickness analysis, which will come in handy for ZBrush 3D printing. But for me to walk you through, um, that would just be me not knowing what I'm talking about. Uh, OK, so OK. Um, well, the UVs too, probably when you clicked on the weld option. Ah, good point. Yeah, so earlier when I welded down, it probably weld the UV. So what you may want to do, ah, I'm not sure how you could avoid that. I mean, you could always take those UVs and shrink them and move them, maybe, and hope hope that it doesn't weld them. Uh, because I'm sure those those uh, UVs, or if you know where the UVs are in Marvel's Designer, you can put it in an area where you know it's not going to be. But uh, 3D print a model with exact measurements. Okay, yeah, if you just want that, that's Z plugin scale master. And then if you click this little button right there, this will walk you through a bunch of instructions. And then click on this little YouTube video here, and this will tell you all about exact measurements and also using the transpose line to get you exact measurements. We'll talk a little bit about that today, but I'm, I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, if you watched, uh, I would go to the Zebra Summit videos and there's always going to be there's always like cool 3d printing stuff the hasbro guy talked a lot about that stuff um uh, houdini tutorials look like GoZ doesn't work properly anymore do you have a workaround uh nope but uh it should be like you may have to go into your GoZ settings and look for installed applications or sometimes in your preferences GoZ um path to houdini you may have to um, reset that up. So update all paths and you can force reinstall sometimes, but uh, yeah, do GoZ troubleshooting. I, I'm not, I don't like troubleshooting things all that much and GoZ is one of those things that seems like it needs troubleshooting uh, more than I'm comfortable with, so I don't use it that much, but try that stuff. 
Um, just a heads up, you may want to check your stream dashboard. Your stream isn't currently set for tags or category. Oh, okay, let me make a note of that. Let's see, and you're from Twitch. Yeah, Twitch, I just kind of let do its thing, so it's probably not helping me very much on there, but we'll check out. And also, I am the absolute worst when it comes to anything like Twitch, Instagram. Yeah, what's the other thing that's a pain in my ass? Um, anything newfangled. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting. I guess I'm getting to that age where it's like, oh, uh, Discord. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> I get it, and there's. I can kind of fumble my way around it, but at the end of the day, it's just. It's it's a bunch of silliness. So. Uh, I feel the same way about Twitch, where I can go on Twitch and I can be like, okay, let me dig through these weird weirdo settings and try and figure out what the hell I actually need to hashtag and all that stuff. But or what I'm allowed to hashtag and the creative blah blah blah, and it's it's a it's a royal pain. So maybe our station will set something up someday, and I don't have to worry about that stuff. That's why I like our station; they make it easier on me just to show up. Um, <clears throat> Has some issues to import Marvel's the ZBrush because it doesn't weld vertex. And if I use weld version, I can't access my poly group. Uh, if it doesn't weld your vertices, all you got to do is go into geometry modify topology and weld it manually. So you can weld it all day long. If your vertices don't, if your if they don't line up, and any any amount of welding, you can crank up your tolerance and it'll weld. But then it's going to start doing some weird stuff, maybe. So um, you can always bring in it with you can bring it in with poly groups unwelded. Uh, you can even do an auto group so they're not welded, and then do a geometry modified topology weld. <clears throat> auto close UI groups when off leaves them open or closes the UI groups on Windows, please. Auto close UI groups when off. Auto close UI groups. I don't know what that means. Can you check if auto close UI groups when off leaves them open or closes the UI? Auto close. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. You talk about okay uh, preferences. UI groups. Auto close interface UI. Auto close Is it somewhere in here. Oh, UI groups. Auto close UI groups. Can you check if auto close UI groups when off? Hold on. All other UI groups can be collapsed when one group is open. Leaves them open or closes the UI groups on Windows. I don't even know what a UI group is. Uh, is this a UI group? UI groups like this. Um, and I think that's also the behavior is also going to be on which side you're on. So for example, like here's tool and picker and I can open and close multiple. And on this side, it automatically, I go to document, it closes brush, I go to brush, it closes document. That's not a function of UI groups. It's a function of something else in here. Uh, I forget exactly where it is, but it's like, it can, it'll can it automatically close, what is it? I don't remember where it is. Spotlight light box. Custom UI, no, UI interface. I don't remember exactly where it is, but somewhere in here, there is like, oh, I want to leave all of these open on the left side, and it'll actually allow you to do that. I think. I'm not sure what UI groups are. Uh, Decker Brush and Zverse 5 worked really well for fur. How's it going? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Kansas City. <laughs> Missouri. Uh, I should head up to Missouri. That's where my, that's where my uh, parents live. Ah, yeah, right on. Uh, no problem. Glad the videos are helping out. Um, a UV object like a six-point star in ZBrush. Auto UV organic stuff works fine for me, but not so well on planar. Um, if I mean, if I ever have any problems UVing in ZBrush, UVing in ZBrush is like UVing a piece of concept art. Uh, it's good and it'll do it really quickly, uh, but if I need to do anything really specific, um, I just want UV and ZBrush. Have to be in Projection Master for the Deco Brush. Oh, that Deco Brush? Yeah, I, pff, man, me and Projection Master takes me back to 2020, uh, 
2010. I might be a little bit out of my element there. Uh, you can watch my old E3D videos. <laughs> ZBrush, R, uh, ZBrush 3.2, 3.5 maybe. Uh, when you say st uh, doing the stitches, how do you control the spacing uh, for like a stitch brush? That should just be a, go into edit mode here, make poly mesh 3D. And then we go in here to our, uh, let's just grab a brush with stitches in it. So we got our stitches here and it's going to be a curved brush. We can go through here and we can add stitches. And then if we go in here to stroke, then we say um, curve, curve functions, curve modifiers. So here's all the curve stuff in here. So you have a curve step. So now if I crank this up and I tap it to update, um, it may do some crazy stuff like this. So you just have to redrag the stroke, but with your curve step up, it'll go ahead and space them out. It's also going to wildly uh, make your um, little kind of uh, space them out a little bit more, but this is actual geometry strokes. So, uh, and then it's gonna make your curve a little bit choppier. So if we go through here <clears throat> and we do like this brush, like sculpted stitches, go through here and do this. Uh, this would be, when it's sculpted, it would be a port of the uh, lazy step, I believe. So steps that set up 0.1, we can try maybe like 0.5. Uh, no, that's not gonna do it because we have roll off, uh, roll on, I'm sorry. So we turn roll off, this is where it gets weird. You can change your lazy step uh, and it'll kind of mash them together and then you can kind of spread them out. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our Z intensity up before we shift down. Um, but then you're not going to have that nice roll functionality, which is going to give you that continuous stroke. But if you did have like separate stitches, like stitch, 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 and you wanted to space them out more, um, this is where you can turn roll off, and then you can go in here and your lazy step will control. So here they are kind of mashed together. Here they are uh, one after the other, and then here they are a little bit more spread out. Decimation master error message is possible to solve. Yeah, go into your geometry, mesh integrity, fix mesh, and sometimes, uh, yeah, yeah, don't, don't have subdivision levels, but if you're just decimating something down, you can delete them. Um, try fixing your mesh. Um, also, yeah, if you have a bunch of crazy non-manifold geometry from a kind of a nutso dynamesh, uh, you might have some weirdo geometry that it doesn't like. <clears throat> you can actually check the mesh integrity and I'll go through and say, hey, we have some errors. If you do fixed mesh, it should like any floating vertices or anything like that. Uh, thanks for going on that stream with us, no problem. What's the skull orientation widget? Is it custom? Yes, this is custom, we did it yesterday. Um, and I'll go ahead and link you to the playlist here again. And if you go here and you go to the live stream full episodes, actually, if you just go to my YouTube channel, it should be fairly recent right here. Uh, live stream ZBrush 2020 new features. And I'll get you up and running on that. That was like 40 minutes of my live stream was playing around with that webcam or that cam settings. It's pretty fun. Um, Controlling UVs and ZBrush is really hard because I have used paint protector, but still not what I want. Any tips? Uh, use polygroups. So if you have a UV master with polygroups turned on, it will only cut where your polygroups are. So and remember, you can always paint exactly where you want your polygroups to go. So I can go through here again, say group by, um, I don't know, look here, group by normals. And then if you want a line through here, Oops, let's hold down control shift and we'll say I want to go through here. So we'll do another auto group. So now we have a polygroup here, a polygroup here, and um, and then you can lay this out. And then you can, getting a polygroup line here is going to be really difficult because you can't really mark an edge to be an open. Um, so that can be tricky. On an organic model is not as tricky because like on my patchy mesh we'll get to in a bit, uh, all the polygroups are kind of separate and you can do whatever you need to do, but like on a surface like this that kind of wraps around on itself, it's a little bit trickier to tell it exactly where that line needs to go. You can try to attract it there and it should do a pretty good job, but if not, you can always just do it by polygroup. Uh, yeah, polygroups is always gonna work, but getting it to work on every situation, um, like for example, if we go here, it's a little bit easier 
if you go in like the cube 3D and say group by normals and then it's like okay uh, you know what and on this one too I want this to be in its own polygroup section and on this one here I want I want these to be in their own polygroup section and I want these to be in their own polygroup section you can just go ahead through there and tell it exactly what polygroups you want and then hopefully if it doesn't make a liar out of me and you when you're going to your UV master and you have polygroups turned on you unwrap and flatten they'll all they all should be cut right along the exact seams that you want now you may have some instances like this where you may need to go in here and you know manually uh, let's do this invert that manually go in here and smooth these things out and you can even you can even straighten these lines if you wanted to just hold down control invert that and then um, you know, straighten it out like that but and flatten cool got an old school I uh, never knew what these oh tray and palette settings was that where that was preferences I always forget um, I don't go in here a lot. Oh, here we go. Palettes, auto collapse, and then left tray and right tray auto collapse. So you can see my left tray auto collapse is turned on, and that's by default. And then in my right tray, it's not an auto collapse. Thank you, John. You, John University. Got an old school question. Never knew what the stroke, ray, radial, and other types do. Hmm. If I did know that, I've forgotten it by now. Um, so if we have, uh, and now if this is a 2.5D question, I'm way out of my element because it's been a long time since I've done anything in 2.5D. Um, yeah, if we're into like go out of edit mode. Ray and radial. I'm not even sure. Or it's under the stroke menu. Yeah, I'm not sure where any of that stuff is. <laughs> uh, line and line two, but not really the rest. Line, is that here? I vaguely remember, so when I'm in this stroke, oh yeah, okay. Line and line two, yeah, you can put the alpha along, okay, now I remember. And then you're in projection master, or even on this, you can even do it in here, I suppose. Um, you have this, and then if you put in an alpha, you can kind of make that. And then in here, um, this is going to be, is it this bit? I got it. I remember. Okay, that is that spacing. You can do it here. I thought it was also maybe in the stroke um, in there, but I guess I'm wrong. And then radial here. Ray radial. So the radial, pretty self-explanatory, just goes around a radius. And then scale, we can scale that in a little bit. Nope. Scale it out a little bit. I scaled it in into something weird. Uh, and then, oh, how many repeats you want? That's pretty cool. Hey, maybe I could use this someday. And then uh, the Ray 90. Oh, man. You might you might have to go into... Uh... This is... Uh, Paul Gabriel would know this. Or Joseph Dress would know this. Me? I don't know anything. Edit mode. There you go. Uh, have you ever worked on Moto? Yeah, when I worked on um, Doom a very, very long time ago, I was in Moto for four or five months. Uh, what do you think is your best workflow for rising in subdivisions to retain detail? Uh, subdivide then zero mesh and projector. Do you prefer using Dynamesh Sculptures Pro or some other methods? Uh, I usually, and if you watch any of my previous live streams, uh, for example, like uh, when we were doing this uh, Bebop stuff, oh, this one, this one right here. Uh, this one, the anatomy one. Basically, I get it up to a certain point with the details I want, and then I zero mesh and project if I'm not going to do anything crazy, and then I go highly detailed. I try not, I don't do highly detailed stuff in Dynamesh very rarely, but I would say. What do you do if one of my subtools gets destroyed when I decimate it? I try to do zero mesh and project back, but I just get a bunch of lines pointing on one vertex. Uh, one of my subtools gets destroyed, so you decimated it down. And then, okay, so it does something weird when you decimate it. 
uh, if you're doing something weird, uh, one kind of thing you can do that might be a little bit safer, because uh, if you have, a, like, a, like we were talking about before, if you do a Dynamesh and it's just going just crazy because you've got... Um, If you got a bunch of crazy stuff going on, let's turn project off. Um, there we go. Like this is going to be a non-manifold nightmare, um, and so you're trying to zero mesh this and having a hard time. Or if you try to decimate it down, it's it's going to probably it may want to keep like a billion polygons somewhere in here and then give you five polygons for the rest of your, rest of your model. It's just having a really hard time. Um, this I would. You could solve this by going through and just like manually cleaning it up, and then you know trying to solve it that way. Uh, another option for you is to do a re instead of a Z remesh or a Dynamesh, you can go down here and you can just do a remesh. Uh, this is let's go ahead and make it symmetrical. You can do it symmetrical across the X, and then when you do a remesh, it's got a solo mode. That's going to give you a blanket of polygons around your object. So this remesh is going to be relatively clean and then in here you can go through and you can try doing a project all uh, and it should like any problem areas let's go and turn X symmetry back on uh, you can go through here and be like okay yeah if I had some wacky stuff going on on the inside this should help alleviate some of that so you can project your details back like that and then this one might be a little bit safer to dynamesh so do a remesh first to give you a blanket and then project. And then if you needed to do manual projection like B, Z, P, you could do use the Z project brush or you can use the new history recall brush which we know went over in the last live stream where you can use that brush instead. Um, did you try the UI groups closing? Yeah, I don't know what a UI group is, so... Uh, so no, <laughs> I mean we went over the uh, the palettes, the left and right tray palette stuff, uh, but I don't know what a UI group is. UI group, what the hell is a UI group? We have a UI, I have palettes, I have menus, I don't know what a group is. Quick demo on how to create torn whole fabrics. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, I have to finish that, so I need to retain the polypane, and I can't get the decimation to work. Uh, yeah, decimation, if you fix your mesh, uh, hopefully that would change it so that it can actually decimate without getting caught in mathematical errors. And uh, Or you can try doing the remesh. The remesh will get your polypane back as well. So when you do project, just make sure your polypane's turned on for your other subtool, and you can project your polypane onto your new remesh. And that should help clean up any weirdo geometry you have going on. <laughs> Whenever I look over and get nothing done, I end up and spending more than three hours at the bathroom. I mean, that's some pretty good anatomy reference. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, maybe I'm trying to think. Other, I mean, there's. I, I would imagine <laughs> there's some other reference that might not have that effect on you. Yeah, it'll retain your polypaint as long as your polypaint's on that you're projecting to. Okay. Uh, let's see, poly paint, UV deco brushes. Yeah, so we went there. We faded our opacity, which is totally cool. Uh, Z sphere models, we went over. Import export, we went over. Poly paint from thickness and draft analysis, and return surface area and transform analyze selected subtool. So we didn't um, do any of that. So let's get that out of the way real quick. So, uh, for example, what's a good one uh, we can use? Do I have a simple? Yeah, let's do this. Streaming, uh, we were doing not Turtle Power, but uh, Mario World, Bowser Kids, Bowser Jr. So let's say I wanted to 3D print this little guy. So uh, the first thing I'm going to notice is like, okay, this cloth is going to be uh, maybe a little bit weird. So this might, I might print separately and kind of just stick it back on. So I'm going to go ahead and say... I mean, because I mean, you're gonna have some crazy draft angles on going on on this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that one, and then these I'm gonna say we're gonna glue those on later. Uh, that I can probably just leave on there. So let's go and do a. If I have anything dynamic on this, I want to make sure I don't have that carried over. So we're gonna go through here. Oh, do I? Yeah, clean tool master. We're gonna say dynamic subdivision to division on all, on everything. That'll go through and 
make all my dynamic subdivisions real geometry. So when I go down here to merge visible, now I've got uh, all these guys merged. And then if I wanted to do an envelope or have everything kind of closed up, if I wanted to do it very cleanly, I can go in here and I can say uh, remesh by union, and that'll go through and do a Boolean additive of all of my objects here. So you're going to see when I control shift click this one, uh, and then I do control shift A, it's going to select everything because these are all now vert welded. If you wanted to have a um, go through and like sculpt, yeah, it, you're probably your best bet would probably be Dynamesh. So figure out what resolution your Dynamesh needs to be uh, for your 3D print without losing too much detail. Something along here, and then you can go through here. And now I would go through and like maybe do a little bit of cleanup work. Let's run X symmetry. There we go. And is this mirrored? Cross the X? Ah, let's say it is. So you can go through here and you can do your uh, cleanup work. So, uh, having said all that, if we go through here and we want to do uh, poly paint or we want to measure thickness and stuff, well, let's let's talk about that. So we can go down here. There's a couple different ways we can do this. So underneath tool here, let's go ahead and hit R to clear that out a little bit. And then let's go ahead and say subtool count up just a bit. So underneath poly paint here, we're going to say um, you can do a poly paint from draft angle and you can also do a poly paint from thickness. So we do from draft angle, that'll go through and you can also from draft you can set the direction. So if I was going to do like a, uh, a two part mold and I want to do front to back, you can just say or from the side, you say set direction, and then say from draft, and it'll basically project, it'll kind of do like a group front, and you're gonna see, okay, if I was gonna pull this out of a mold, uh, I'm gonna have some issues with these red areas right here. So that'll kind of mark it in poly paint for you. Um, and then from thickness, if we go over here, it'll go through and it'll see uh, if your model is going to be uh, thick enough. So if, this is where you need to go into like Z plugin, and go in here to your scale master, and then uh, set your scene scale, and it's like, okay, how how big is this object here? And then uh, that'll make it so that uh, if you were working in inches and you were using ZBrush's default is uh, millimeter units, but it, you can kind of think of it as just generic units. So when you bring something in, you can go through here and you can make it uh, whatever size you want. So right now we're working at, it's only 1.99 millimeters high. So let's say, you know what, we're working in, uh, let's say it's, 1.99 feet. There we go. So now we're working in feet. And so now when we hit Y and we use our transpose scale here, let's see if we go from the bottom of the foot to the, oh, there's not going to be any sub markers here. Let's go into our preferences transpose line. And then we'll go to uh, so, X action line transpose units. That's what I want. Uh, minor ticks per one unit scale, major ticks per. Okay, so this right here is oh, oh boy. So he is now hundreds of feet tall. Interesting. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to um, 607 millimeters. So this is now uh, a lot of millimeters tall. And then our sub units here are gonna be too small. Well, shoot, uh, let's do this. Let's go into our tool here and let's just grab that demo head. So now, okay, here we go. So uh, this is Okay, that's only 1.48 millimeters, but even with these generic units, I can kind of show you if we do poly paint from thickness, it's going to be all red. You have a min thickness and a max thickness. So the min thickness is one. So if we go through here and we say, okay, I want to measure how thick this ear is. Uh, so you can kind of go through here and you can take this outer ring here. So this, this thickness right along here is 0.02. So let's say that's going to be, 0.02 is going to be the minimum I would want. So min thickness, you can say 0.02. And then now you're gonna see, okay, this area, anything that's uh, near that 0.02 thickness is gonna be red. And then your max thickness, uh, where everything is good, let's go into our preferences here so you can see that. So preferences, analysis, 
here. I can see it's going to go from red to blue. So uh, if you have a max thickness you want to dial in, you can see, okay, I don't want to go any more than two uh, or one or 0.5 in this case or 0.25. So here's where it's a li getting a little bit too thin. Here's where um, it's actually okay and everything that's blue. So you can go through here and you can go through and say, okay, I'm going to get my inflate brush and we're just going to inflate auto save. We're going to go through and we're going to inflate this and then rerun that analysis and you say, oh, okay, it's getting better. So if you're 3D printing and you know you have a certain thickness you want to maintain, you can use your transpose line. If I didn't explain that well enough, up here is where it's showing that distance. So you can go through here and you can say, how uh, thick is that nostril? You can go through here and you hit W with a transpose. And it's just W and then Y snaps it from gizmo. It's this button right here. It goes from gizmo to transpose. So now you can go through here and you can say, okay, I'm going to measure that nostril. And that nostril is point, uh, 0 0.019. So that might be a little bit thin for your printer. So that could be a problem area. And then in which case you'd have to go through here and maybe inflate a little bit and then rerun that um, analysis there. So there's that. Uh, okay, and then going back to draft, if I go through here and I say, okay, I want to do a poly paint uh, from draft. I'm going to set the direction front to back. So I'm going to do a like a two-part mold here. That's where my mold line is going to be, and I'm going to have problems in here. Now, with this poly paint, you have, uh, you can do, you can set your quality of your thickness. That'll give you a little bit more quality. And then your draft, you can set your draft uh, angle. You can set your direction. You can invert that direction. So here, I'm going to have a little bit of a problem. So you can go through here, and you can kind of sculpt this out. Let's turn off RGB for our clay brush. Sculpt this out, or you can smooth it. And let's turn off RGB. And then you can rerun, oops, from draft. And you don't have to reset the angle, or you don't have to set your camera back. You've already set that angle, so you can just keep doing from draft. And now you can see, okay, this area is now fine. Um, it's kind of a clunky way to work. So what they did was, underneath transform, you have this uh, draw draft analysis. So we can go to the front here, and we can say, uh, let's turn that on. I'm going to set the direction based on this, and then uh, now it's real time. So you're going to see... Uh, as I'm sculpting in like this area, I can go through and I can hold down shift to smooth and that'll go ahead and clean up that area. So any problem areas you can go through here and you can use your clay brush or your smooth brush and that'll make sure that you're not going to have um, any issues through here. So you can go through here and you can use your inflate and smooth. That's smooth stronger is a little bit high for his resolution. So you can kind of go through here and you can make sure that it, you're not going to have any issues with your draft here. Uh, and then now in here it's definitely going to have a problem because that's like an undercut. So you're going to have to go through here and figure out if you want how, if you want to go straight back yeah, and that kind of stuff. And then along the bottom of the jaw here, you're going to want to kind of pull this out a little bit. So, and again, not that you would maybe necessarily do uh, a two part mold from front to back. If you wanted to go right to left, again, you just set that direction. And now, you know, Okay, okay, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to smooth this up, get rid of, you're basically looking to get all green. So you can go through there and you can kind of do that. Ta-da! So any of these things, just go through. And then you can go through and, uh, like, see, through here, on the back of this ear, you're going to have a problem because it's going to be an undercut, so you'd have to go through here and either have this go straight back, or you can use your clay brush, you can use your inflate brush if you're using Dynamesh we can. You can go through here and you can say, you know what, let's just, I'm going to have this just go straight back. Clay brush, redyna mesh. And now you're going to see, now I can pop that straight out uh, of the mold because I'm not going to have any undercuts and there's no problems. So that kind of thing. Hey Billy, thanks for showing up. Um, uh, time lapse. I know you um, can't help but looking at it. Yeah, so this kind of grew on me, the silhouette panel. I agree. Uh, I, I mean, if I'm doing like anything static, I'm probably not going to be up there. But man, if you're doing anything dynamic or you have, you're have setting up a scene or something, I mean, I guess it would be good for like a static pose that you're doing stuff with. But 
at the same time, that doesn't really tell the whole story of functionality either, so that can be a little bit misleading as far as how your silhouette looks in an A pose versus how it's going to look in-game, running around and jumping. Uh, two very different things, but uh, you can kind of get a handle on it. And it's also a little bit faster, too, and you can also turn that off. If it's annoying, go in here to your um, preferences, or I shouldn't say annoying, but if you don't need to see it all the time, um, go in here to preferences and then the thumbnail view, you can just toggle it off. You can even have to sign, sign a hotkey to this so we can say, you know what, control shift, um, click this and then we'll assign that to, uh, let's put that on alt Z that we used earlier. So now you can just use alt Z to turn that on and off. So now when I'm in here and I'm like, hey, let's go through and uh, be a snake hook sphere. Maybe not, X symmetry. Sculptors Pro. There we go. Okay, oh yeah, you know what? I'm doing some pretty crazy changes, so I'm gonna need to go in there and I'll just tap Alt Z. And then I can make this a little bit bigger or smaller. And uh, that way I don't have to go in and be like, okay, hold on, let me, with all my sub tools, let me turn off, hold down Shift and turn that off, and let me change my background to white and my uh, color to black, and let me do all that stuff just to get this. It's like, oh, it's right there. And you can just toggle it on and off as needed. And uh, the patchy thread guy will go through and play a little bit around with him a little bit. Is there a way to assign a key to the deformation deformation drop down menu? Uh, usually you can assign a key to anything. It gets a little bit tricky with like these dividers. Um, but the. Like if you wanted all of these in a menu to the deformation drop down menu. Uh, you could recreate that in a menu pretty quickly. You can go, um, so in here, in my YouTube channel, this, uh, enter to ZBrush what's new, copy link address, go in there and there's a way to like do custom menus, custom interfaces. Uh, you can just recreate this menu in a custom, and it probably, honestly, you could probably pare this down. I'm sure you, I, I, I make, you, you could use all of these, but uh, just take the ones you want out of there and then you can just assign it to a custom menu and then assign that to a hotkey and then your deformation uh, stuff will be right at your fingertips. Also remember, I don't really use those deformations that much anymore because um, a lot of your deformations are in this little gizmo here and you can actually control it better. Um, so this will be in the ZBrush 20, 2018 what's new section. Uh, you can learn a lot more about these deformers in here. They're, they're, uh, these are way, way, way better. Uh, these deformers are a little bit limited in that you have to be on the world axis. Uh, could you, the polypane from Thickness, be for any use of a subsurface map? Absolutely. That's a, that could be really cool. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's go down here to our uh, polypaint. Not polygroups, polypaint from Thickness here. And uh, yeah, so you can set it to be like, okay, I want these red areas, I do want them. So in that case, what you could do is, let's go back to where we didn't go crazy. So here, uh, let's say, you know what, I do want a thickness map from this area. So let's, first of all, let's go in here to quality and let's like crank that up so we get a very nice quality map. And it's also vertex, uh, or quality is also going to be affected by how clean your poly paint is. So now that we have this, we can also go through here to our, um, we could do it through poly paint. Let's just do it through masking. Let's go mask by color, mask by poly paint. And then now we can go through here and we can isolate just like this red area here. Let's get in here. We want to grab just the red, oh, come on just the red pieces and then just like maybe these pieces here you can let's go ahead and turn off our colors so you can be like okay here's where our thickness is going to kind of kick in you can go through here and you can kind of blur it out a little bit and then you can go through here and you can change the tolerances if you want to grab more or less and then you can say okay and then if you wanted to export a uh, thickness map you could just go okay i'm going to go to color fill object with rgb turned on and then uh, uh white rgb color fill object control tap oh wait color fill object black and then invert that and then fill object white and then there's my thickness map that you could then go to if you had uvs i don't know if we do if you had uvs you could just do a uh, texture map create new from poly paint or 
you can go into your Z plugin, multi-map exporter, and then you can just bake any of your maps, and then also in here is your texture from polypaint option. How did you obtain the top right skeleton thingy? That'll be, let me link you here, copy link address. Uh, the first 40 minutes of this is cam information. It's really fun to play with, so definitely uh, go through there and uh, check that out. And this, this functionality too, like being able to kind of paint your red, green, and blue is really interesting too. You can do it all in Photoshop if you wanted to. Uh, new Peel UV come in with a 2020? No, it didn't. Cool. Had to bring the Zip Um Had to bring the Z tool from one dock to another, which has multiple sub tools. I tried that with the newly brought. Z tool would show up with only one subtool from that. What's the proper way to do this? Uh, you'd have you can do it manually. The easy way to do it uh, would be to go to. So let's say we have we have a demo soldier, and this demo soldier has a lot of subtools, and then also we have a Bowser Jr. And this Bowser Jr. has a lot of subtools. So I want to put this Bowser Jr into uh, this, but I don't want to lose my tool settings, I don't want to lose my uh, geometry settings, I have creasing, I have names that I want to lose, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, and we're going to say control F, and we're going to say Bowser folder, and then uh, actually what I should have done, let's do this, let's do delete folder. So I'm going to hit W, I'm going to go to move multiple, I'm going to unhash everything, I'm going to hit control F, I'm going to say yes, make a new folder with several visible. So now uh, everything that was showing uh, will be in Bowser Jr. If I had something that was hidden, I can't just go through here and I can just drag it uh, into this folder. Uh, so now we have a Bowser Jr. folder. So now what we can do, let's go out of move multiple, we're going to go into Z plugin, subtool master, and we're going to go in here, we're going to say copy folder. And then we're going to go into Demo Soldier, and we're going to say Paste Folder. So now it's going to take my entire Bowser Jr. folder and paste it into my um, Demo Soldier. And it's going to keep my names, it's going to keep my creasing, it's going to keep my polypaint, anything like that. Uh, you could also use like Multi-Append with FBX files, but um, I think you could. Or maybe, does Multi-Append work with OBJs? I don't remember. Or FBXs. Uh, but anyway, either way, um, now you have... Uh, Bowser Jr. and all his stuff. So if I wanted to be like, hey, you know, and actually, is this, is this a scale? Maybe. So I'm going to go here to Bowser Jr. and go ahead and move him up. And I'm going to say transpose set. So now I can just move uh, Bowser Jr. here. And it's like, oh, okay, he's not completely to scale. So let's say, um, let's go down here and maybe scale him up just a little bit. Like so. And then we'll go here to move multiple turned off. Ta-da! Uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da -da. Uh, small commit gripe in the last two years or so. Pixelogic has been adding so many new things. I keep falling behind with the new stuff. I'm just now getting used to zero mesher. I, I was the same way for a long time. Um, and I still am. There's a lot of stuff in ZBrush I don't know. So don't feel too bad about that. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff in a lot of programs I don't know. And you just, I don't know. That's kind of the fun thing about this industry and also the terrifying thing about this industry is you're never really caught up. As soon as you learn something or you think you're good at something, something else comes along that makes that either obsolete or reinvents the way you do it. And uh, it's cool, but. Uh, Post figure using transpose tool when it came out, parts are only half visible and get worse if you check double. Transpose the figure using transpose. Transpose master? Uh, if you're just using the transpose tool, you should see what it's what kind of crazy stuff it's doing while it's doing it, I would think. Um, I'd have to see. I'd have to see what you're doing there to troubleshoot that one. How much would a how much would a 3D artist ask to create a single human model, do you think? Unrig topology doesn't need to be very clean, just a static sculpt. I would time yourself doing it and then charge however much an hour you think is appropriate. If you're cool working for five bucks an hour. That could be a cheap model. If you like working for 90 bucks an hour, then that'll be how much you want to charge. 
every time I import XBX files inside of Zipper, I see a lot of holes inside my mesh, sort of topology issue, and almost every sub tool I have multiple meshes. Yeah, if you're modeling a gun in 3D Studio Max and you're using a lot of N-Gons, uh, ZBrush doesn't like N-Gons. So I would triangulate, um, or at least, maybe not triangulate everything, but certainly, like in Maya, I would run a cleanup where I'm like, select every face that has more than four sides, triangulate those faces, now I can export, and ZBrush should handle that better. Um, yeah, Transpose Master. Um, using Transpose Master, when it comes out, only, parts are only half visible, and it gets worse if you check double. I would say go into Clean Tool Master before you go into Transpose Master and do stuff like um, Clear Masks and Show Hidden and all this stuff, because if you have any hidden geometry and you have any masks, it's going to mess it up. So make sure you're working clean before you go into Transpose Master and then come back, because if you go into Transpose Master and you're, it's missing vertices or um, or it's like a weird mask or something when it comes back in maybe uh, I could I could do I could do it be a be a bad thing uh, why do people use Mario over spotlight when doing pores uh, you can it, may, it might be resolution based so you can do in Mari you can do crazy resolution it can be just texture based and you can also paint multiple channels through so that would be couple reasons and you can also paint directly on UDIMs and stuff which Spotlight uh, has a little bit of a harder time with in that you'd have to kind of do a lot of workarounds. Uh, so poly paint from thickness, draft analysis we talked about. Uh, on that same note there's a macro you can download where you do return surface area and that'll get as long as it's uh, a closed mesh like uh, this mesh right here his mouth area. Also so I'll give you your surface area here, uh, water type mesh. Okay, maybe it's not fine. Close holes, Josh modify topology. Oh, I'm kind of surprised that. Let's see here. Um, I usually work pretty watertight. Um, there we go. I guess there was a weird geometry in there. Uh, so there's a surface area of that, and also there was one more thing that was in uh, transform and line select as yes. So under the transform menu, we're doing the draft analysis. Uh, also in there, there is an analyze elliptic subtool, and then I'll give you a unit size, closest size of measurement for the subtool, uh, and you can actually resize it from here. But uh, it'll give you a little bit of information about that. And I think we are all caught up on that stuff here. So if you guys want, uh, oh, now we can start getting into like maybe the V-Ray stuff and the ZBrush stuff. It might be fun. Folders inside of folders could be a thing in ZBrush one day. That could be really useful. I agree. One day. <laughs> yeah, I'm streaming a little bit more this month than I usually do. I use transpose master, I get a stair-stepping effect on the limbs that the limbs are being split in separate pieces, no masks or morph targets. I get this effect even with simple subdivided cylinder. Um, so first I will need, uh, I guess we can do a sphere under, that's close enough. Uh, or right, let's, let's stick with cylinder. We got a cylinder 3D, make polymesh 3D, and then we need another subtool here. So we're going to make our human. Here's our human. And now we want to go into um, Z plugin, transpose master, and we're going to transpose our mesh. Okay. And then if you're using transpose, and go through here, we can do nice bending. Uh, how I'm doing that is just control dragging and then control tapping to blur that mask. Um, if you're using a higher resolution mesh, then I would. I would prefer, like, I, that's what I like having subdivision level so I can do this. If you're kind of stuck, you can actually back your camera out. And the further you go back, um, maybe it just works on, I mean, it should work on that too. But let's see if this effect, the further out you go, the blurrier that mask is. So now we can go through here and get a little bit better deformation here. So, for example, let's go back here. Mask pen, blur, blur, here. And a transpose line, I let's see. Let's hit Y if you are using transpose for your stuff. Um, 
rotate should be the same it's just using that mask you can also hold down w and control drag and that'll auto mask along your topology so if you wanted to bend this other way well, it's been a long time since i used transpose lines uh, we want to unmask this one um <laughs> Let's do this. I, I, I gotta get out of transpose. Transpose should work the same way. Um, hold down control, uh, mask lasso, and then control alt. And then now you can bend all these back. And then we go back here to T pose mesh. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. Go back to T pose sub T. Then I go back to my sub tools and then snap those positions. I'm not sure if I follow. Smoothing surface zebra. Um, do you have any tips for smoothing surfaces in ZBrush? I started using ZBrush in class, and my stylized character has these micro crevices. Uh, if you're using like DynaMesh, you can go through here, and if you're getting any sort of weird uh, smoothing on here, well, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to smooth in ZBrush. Uh, if you're getting artifacts, you can hold down Shift to smooth and then let go of shift and that'll give you a different smoothing algorithm. If you have Sculptures Pro turned on and you hold down shift to smooth and you let go of shift, it's actually gonna inflate uh, a little bit. But if you uh, don't have that on, it should have the uh, alternate algorithm. So if you have, if you have uh, like star geometry or if you're using DynaMesh and you're getting some weird like poked holes, just hold down shift and let go of shift, uh, or I would update my geometry. Um, there's also, if you go into your comma key, there is a ton of smooth brushes in here. So I can do smooth directional, smooth perpendicular. If we get into claw sculpting today, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, what brush can slide mesh on a surface? No brush can do that, that I know of. Uh, there, Well, that's not true. There's, what is it? There's brush. I think there is something that can kind of do that, but what I would probably do instead is go down here to your morph target, store a morph target, and then um, if you want to kind of like, you can move this geometry over, and then you can say um, project morph, and then, oh boy, I think what we we're doing, we we're doing that, holding it in a layer. Here, I'm going to. Um, So in here, they're talking about, yeah. So right in here, he's gonna talk about how to move stuff around and have it make it look like skin is sliding over a surface on your um, sculpt here. So share, I don't do a whole lot of blend shapes like this, but start at copy. That would be my best guess as to what you're looking for. Um, good animal to sculpt in ZBrush. Uh, a hippopotamus. Can you show me how to grab loop or edge around, say, the lips and then make it into a new poly group? Yeah, so when you're in here, demo head, comma key, edit mode, F to frame, and you know what? Let's go to geometry, delete higher. So, one, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can hold down a control lasso. Oh, come on. And then uh, let's go into solo mode here. Hold on, control shift and grab. What is going on with ZBrush? Hold on, control shift, you can just grab this and then you can go into um, poly groups, auto groups. And then you can hold on, control shift and grab these two groups and hit control W. And now you can have like your mouth bag. Okay, something weird is happening. Let's go ahead and kick out of there. Uh, you're great at giving 3D tips, but how do you get rid of a cold quickly? Oh man, zinc, I think. Here's something that helped me. I always used to think I got colds, and it turns out I just got, I had ragweed allergies. So in Austin, October and November really peaks in ragweed. Uh, so I went and I got allergy shots, and I'm, I'm, I am get allergy shots every, I used to get them like every two, two times a week, and then once a week, and then once every other week, and then now I'm down to once a month. And that kind of... That helps me because, man, I would get like cold, I would get like flu like symptoms. I would be like, oh, I'm sh I got chills and I'm lethargic and I'm constantly coughing and runny nose. And it turns out it was just ragweed kicking my butt every year. So that helped. 
but that's not really a cold cold. Um, is there any way to work with splines in ZBrush? I like the power of curve tools, but editing them is a pain sometimes. Um, proper splines, no. I mean, fiber mesh is kind of spliney. Uh, curves have spline-like properties, but not what you're looking for. Not that I know of. Um, I don't have a really good answer for that. When sculpting, when finishing sculpture and doing details, wrinkles stuff is it usually done in ZBrush with higher subdivision level than alphas, or should that kind of thing be done in texturing software instead? You can do either or. Uh, it kind of depends on if you want to, what you see is what you get. It's kind of fun, but it's also a little bit destructive in ZBrush. You can use layers to mitigate that a bit. Um, a general rule of thumb is if it doesn't break for, eh, you could maybe use this as a general rule, is that if it doesn't break the silhouette, then just do it in the texture. I kind of follow that ish. Uh, skull on the right top is our cam view. So check out <laughs> uh, Z live stream ZBrush 2020 new features. And then I'll walk you through 40 minutes worth of cam view customization. It's a little bit addictive. Types of demos of cloth sculpting is the biggest challenge. I like patchies. If you want to vote in the direction, definitely cloth. All right. Um, let's do it. Cool. Uh, okay. So, okay. 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 We can do this. So, I'm going to load up. I'm with the comma key. No. Let's go to load tool here. So, yesterday we talked a little bit about the making of this guy here, recording patchy, patchy render. And this is what I basically, and I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't bake any maps or anything uh, out of here. I just went through and I sculpted and I just basically exported this straight into. Um, straight into Maya. So for example, if I was to sculpt some cloth, let's go into my comma key here and um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Let's go into our tool menu here. I mean, I guess I can just show you on patchy. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, that'll work. Uh, but that's just his body. Okay, let's do this. So we have arms in here. And we have geometry. So this basically I would uh, go through and I did a, uh, I dynameshed this result and then I zero meshed it so I could uh, get these nice uh, fingers in here. And then uh, I wanted to go through and sculpt some wrinkles. So for example, if I go through here, I'm just going to isolate. Uh, let's get one where he's got nice bent arms. Let's say these ones here. Let's go ahead and say um, delete lower, split hidden. We can reconstruct. And then now we're back where we started. So if they're here, for example, I can go in here. I'm again, I'm going to turn off all anchors of the surface. And I'm just going to go through and smooth. Let's go to smooth, stronger. So we basically have two arms in here with no wrinkles on them. So uh, again, like I mentioned before, if you go to zbrushguides.com and just Google zbrush guides cloth. Or I can link you there. I'll just leave that open. Cloth and drapery course. Uh, definitely check this out if you want the brushes I'm about to use. Um, and you can make your own brushes like these. You can, um, anything, if you know ZBrush well enough, you can just recreate these. But it's also a lot easier just to grab them sometimes too. So I'll leave that up to you. But uh, you can go through here. And um, so we want to sculpt some cloth. Actually, I wonder if they'd be cool with that. Um, I have a CGMA student who's doing some cloth stuff. Uh, that would be really good to demo this, but I'm not sure if they want me to. So, uh, okay, so we have this cloth, and now we have our tension points here. So we're going to say, okay, this is going to be a tension point, and then this, wherever the cloth is going to hang from and hang to. So in fact, let's make go ahead and make this like it's a very hangy cloth through here. And you know what? We can even we could dynamesh this if we want to. Let's just go ahead and just dynamesh this. I don't care uh, too much about our resolution. We're just kind of blocking this in. So we have, this is going to be kind of hangy, loose up here. And you know what? Let's do it uh, on this side too. So we'll say mask lasso. And I'll go ahead and grab this. Okay. That'll be hanging cloth as well. And we can go ahead and set resolution up a little bit. And then now this will kind of be where we'll have a, uh, like I said, for a tension point here, and then tension point here, and then in between here is where you're going to have, you know, it's going to kind of drape from those tension points. So like through here, 
And then here's another tension point, and it's going to kind of drape uh, through here and then drape through here. Uh, on the opposite ends of this, you might have, um, instead of these long flowing drapes, you're going to have more um, compression folds along the top. And then even in areas like here, you're going to have, uh, this is just Damien standard brush, you hold down Alt, and you can go through here and you can have these uh, half lock folds in here. So wherever you have major bends and elbows and stuff, you'll have those kind of folds. Uh, here you'll have more drapery folds, and then here you might have compression folds. So, uh, and there's more types of folds than that, but that's the basics of it. So now if we wanted to do this proper, um, I would suggest going and doing subdivision history for clothing. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to kind of go through into your primary forms, your secondary forms, and your memory folds if you want to get that detailed. So here we have cloth kind of hanging. <clears throat> and so now let's go ahead and do a quick, I'm just going to kind of simplify these. We don't need to do, we can do skin tight stuff as well. It's actually kind of fun. Like if you're doing uh, a flash bodysuit superhero type thing, uh, we can kind of show that off. But so here we have this and now we're going to go into, um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And we're going to say zero measure half at that size down to zero, and we're just going to zero mesh this result. And if we had sculpted detail on here already, uh, we can definitely get that back. So it would just be a matter of, you know, as we, <clears throat> you can do this in solo mode, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as both of these eyeballs are showing, um, you can go through and you can project all. So we're just going to keep zero meshing half. And again, like I said, uh, as you go down, you can just keep hitting project all. And then I'll go ahead and project your details. Uh, well, or at least getting the forms projected back. Now, if I want to get my details back, and this is what I want to use as my low res, Control D, project all, Control D, project all. And now if we go into stay in solo mode and then click th clip through these, you're going to see, oh yeah, these look the exact same. I don't need this Dynamesh version anymore. Delete that. And now I have a version of my arms with subdivision history. So now it's a little bit easier for me to like go down to subdivision level one, make major changes, and then through here. So for example, I can go through here and I can do, again, this is just like Damien standard. I can do like draping cloth here and just hold down alt and let go of alt. Um, alternatively, you can go in here to your slash brush. You might like that one. So QRS, nope. Slash, uh, right there. And then we could do like slash two and slash two brush is kind of um, similar to that, but it kind of cuts in a little bit. Now you're gonna see when I hold down shift to smooth, this is gonna be smooth stronger. So it just smooths everything. If you wanna lower that, you can say, drop that intensity down. Um, if you also wanna go into, go with the comma key and then go near to smooth, there's a smooth directional and then now when you hold down shift to smooth, if I go in the direction of these wrinkles, it'll smooth but maintain my forms. If I go against these wrinkles, it'll smooth uh, all the way out. So you can use that to your advantage if you just want to go, you know, this way and then you're good to go. Or you can go this way and just completely obliterate it. And that smooth per perpendicular works the same way, um, just opposite um, strokes. So now uh, we have that. And then also, if you want to go into zbrushguys.com, he has some cloth brushes in here, and this is where we get in, like magic folds. Uh, so for example, magic fold soft is kind of like that slash brush, only this has a vector displacement map that kind of folds in on itself. So you can use, you can hold down alt, and you can let go of alt, and let's add a little bit more resolution. Let's hit control D, get another subdivision in here. You can go through here and you can add your drapery folds and use your, um, and again, you can just hold down Alt and let go of Alt, and you can go through, and you can, um, and you can also do uh, on the opposite side of maybe compression folds, uh, which we haven't really talked too much about yet. But unlike the back of, you can, um, you probably have some compression folds on the top here. Let's go ahead and inflate this a bit, for example. Um, on the top here, you probably be, as you're moving this up, it'll be a little bit more compressed. And on the bottom here, you might get um, a little bit more of these twisted folds along the back and bottom here. And then on the elbows here, you can use this brush. You can hold down Alt and you can go through here and you can do your half lock um, folds like this. 
Uh, he also has in that collection, um, like these VDM, these are again vector displacement. You can just go through here and you can drag and drop in your half lock folds and then you go through and smooth directional. That might save you a little bit of time. But, um, and also you can also go in here with your slash brush or your Damien standard brush and you can kind of, it's really more about like observing the cloth that you're trying to emulate and kind of go in from there. Um, now the compression folds on the opposite of like these kind of draping folds here would be something like these kind of compression folds. So we can go through here and we can smooth directional and then you can go through here and hold down like standard brush and kind of, or maybe, yeah, just go through here and kind of make those compression folds. Um, he actually has a really cool brush that you can check out called X folds. And I'm not the best cloth sculptor by any means. So by all means, go check out his course. He's much better at it than I am. Uh, I'm just kind of using his stuff poorly. Uh, but you can go through here and this will kind of break up your surface and then you can go through here and you can go through and kind of smooth directional out. And then this just allows you to go through and if you want to use your magic folds cloth, um, you can go through and be like, okay, let's um, maybe match these up with that direction and they, or even your standard brush. You can go through here and you can increase some of that here. So when you know this is gonna kind of fold in, if you wanna en enhance some of these folds here, you can do that. You can go in here and you can inflate you can use your standard brush and that kind of thing. So now you'll have the uh, compression folds on the top, half lock folds, uh, twisted folds here. And then like we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> these draping folds on this long cloth here. So how you wanna kind of work these in here. And you can actually just go across the top here as well and turn those into uh, kind of compression folds. There's that, and then yeah, in the, in the middle here. Test for character sculpting regarding posing, first posing, then sculpting, or sculpting, then posing. I'm always a sculpt, then pose, just because I'm production oriented. So I don't want to sculpt 2x the work, you know, especially when most of what you're, if, if what most of what you're sculpting is mirrored, then just sculpt mirrored first and then pose later, and then do corrective blend, corrective blend shapes, corrective sculpting after you pose. Save yourself some time. Uh, we're going to laptops. We're not showing the options of the faces when I use the modeler. Some options go out of the screen. Um, do you have resolution options on your... Because um, I'm working at 1080p right here. And so, yeah, if I go in here... Yeah, if, you're, if your screen's super tiny, um, ZBrush might have a hard time. I'm not sure how to fix that. That would be a Ask ZBrush Twitter question, maybe. How do you mirror and weld from the opposite side of the x-axis mirror first? So if we have, let's see, we have x-symmetry turned on, and we have here, and it's like, okay, I want to do a quick mirror and weld, and it's go, oh, it mirrors from that side. Uh, deformation mirror, then mirror and weld. <laughs> yes, that would be, yeah, Klaus Simmons ZBrush would be amazing. Uh, yeah, those are paid brushes, zbrushguys.com. Uh, what are the things we shouldn't do to make ZBrush crash, uh, I I don't I usually have a I don't have that much of a problem with ZBrush lately. Um, I don't know. I think they fixed most of the things that used to make ZBrush crash that I've that I use anyway. 
Um, yeah, so zbrushguides.com. That's where I got those brushes. <laughs> yes. Bad bud, thanks for showing up. Uh, okay, so now we, uh, we were talking about patchy, we talked about sculpting. Uh, so we did talk about a sculpting extractor brush yesterday and how we uh, kind of arrived at uh, this final here. Uh, one thing I did want to cover maybe is we can use, so we have our, um, our patchy here, and then we did go through here. Let's go down one subdivision level so it goes a little bit faster. Uh, so we talked about how we could do uh, morph UV, and then we could we sculpted, uh, we we went through and extracted, and then we went through and kind of did this all on the fly, just kind of take it and doing the extractor brush, and then kind of going along these uh, seams right here. We also talked about we can go over this well, um, importing our, um, well, it's not that one, there it is, fabric patterns here, so texture, oops, texture import. I'll make sure I didn't knock that too off keel here. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Fine. Cancel. Uh, that's what happens when you work on a larger monitor. Okay. Uh, texture. Yeah, okay, we've already imported it. Let's go ahead and add it to Spotlight. And, oh, here's something I didn't go over. So if we go in here to Texture, and uh, you're in Spotlight, and you go in here to, um, okay, let's go... Here we have our texture selected. We're in Spotlight. Go in here to adjust colors, and if you want to go through here and like do a hue shift, or you can you know mask any areas out that you want to mask, uh, and you can change their colors on the fly, and you can tint it however you want, all that good stuff. So when you do that, I think if you go back into yeah Spotlight, uh, it'll go ahead and update with that new texture. So if we can go through here. Also, I was going through here in v, H and V tiling. If you hold down Shift, that'll do both tiles at once, so you don't have to do one two three one two three. So we'll go ahead and scale this out. And then we'll go in here with our standard brush, turn RGB on. That was in the YouTube comments as well. I, generally speaking, if I have the standard brush, I can just turn RGB on and I'm good to start painting. If you want, there is a BP paintbrush in here, which I think is essentially the standard brush with RGB turned on. So that is available to you if that makes your life a lot easier. So we're going to go through here and we're going to paint our... Oops, let's go ahead and move this back so we can see everything. I'm going to paint over everything in here. So then when I go out of Morph UV, now I got patchy like this. Uh, let's go back into Morph UV. Now these are all on separate poly groups. Here if I go into polyframe, these are all separate poly groups. So I can go in here to my brush, auto masking. Mask my poly groups up to 100. Let's go ahead and bring in uh, another texture here. So texture import. And we'll go ahead and bring in this one here. And we'll go ahead and select it and add it. And then I'll you know, hold down shift again and go ahead and put this here and then uh, if I just want to pin it also let's lower down this res this here let's turn that down just a bit as you can go through here and now I can be I can just the first place I click on let's go also turn off lazy mouse I uh, can go through here and you can just start painting so that way as long as I'm painting on that one poly group it's going to auto mask all the other poly groups here so we can just go through here and do this just either turn that off uh, morph UV and then now we're back now if I ever decided like oh you know what I wish um, I had used this orange on this area here. You can go back to Morph UV. You can, you could have duplicated this off into its own subtool and morph between subtools like I did last time. You should also be able to go through here and go back to this version of your history, control tap that one, and then go back to this version of your history and then have RGB turned on with your BH history recall brush and we'll turn Z sub off. Uh, and then you can go through here and you can just paint back from your history what you have. So you don't even need to have another subtool you're pulling in from. Um, you can just do that and then you can morph out of that UV and then there you go. Just wanted to make sure I talked about that. Cool. Um, I'd like to upgrade my PC. Can you advise me on a setup? I'm using ZBrush and rendering with V-Ray or Keyshot, sometimes video editing. Um, I mean I have a let's see, control shift escape. This one's done pretty good for me so far. Um, this is a Gen 2 uh, Ryzen Threadripper 29 WWX. Uh, it's, it, 
if you're just using CPU stuff where you want the, well, I mean, I don't know if you've heard of the new announcements and stuff, you can check that out. Uh, but the performance on the Threadrippers are getting pretty nuts. Uh, clock speed and memory access and stuff like that. So I I'm, I'm I would use a Threadripper for like performance and cost if you're doing like video encoding and um, rendering. Uh, if you're doing hybrid rendering, if you're doing GPU rendering, even if you're doing GPU rendering, it's still a good, you're gonna, it's going to be on, it's going to have to have a good motherboard. It's a good CPU. It can handle memory really, really well. So it'll help a lot of things. Uh, big, big fat pipes on those type of systems. So uh, depending on what kind of rendering you want to do, uh, ZBrush is pretty memory intensive as well. So I have, um, I have 128 gig of RAM on here. Also fast RAM, as fast as you can get is also probably pretty good. And also the speed of your hard drive is pretty good. So uh, it kind of depends on how much money you have. But uh, as price performance, I would say any any Ryzen uh, processor should be pretty good on the cost per core per um, speed. Uh, if you're just gaming, and you're worried about like 144 frames a second versus 136 frames a second, uh, that might not be the case, but I don't care about any of that. So your mileage may vary. Uh, what kind of computer we're going to now? Is it the same as before? Have you upgraded? Uh, I have upgraded from the 1950X to the 2990WX. And we'll see what we're going to do moving forward. How do you set up an NVMe SSD drive for better ZBrush performance? Uh, I might get into that later. I'm not exactly sure. As far as hardware stuff, I'm a hardware, vaguely hardware. I'm not as hardware literate as I'd like to be. Let's put it that way. How did you get that stencil? That was uh, uh, Spotlight. So Z uh, and then Shift Z and then goes in and out of this mode. So you can actually, you can paint in this mode as well. You can just kind of paint through. Um, RGB, like so. Oh, we're still having the history recall brush. <laughs> uh, RGB, you can just paint through here. Uh, but then you're going to have to like wrap around, and then getting these patterns to match up is going to be nearly impossible. So that's when you can go into Morph UV, and then you can just turn Spotlight back on. And then you can just straight across here. And you can also sculpt in here as well. So if you wanted to be like, I want to sculpt, or let's go into Damien Standard, and I want to put seams uh, right in here or stitches or whatever you want to do and kind of just sculpt straight across and then morph your UVs back and then you'll have all that good stuff uh, we continue streaming every week uh, probably not this is more of a ZBrush is new and I want to make sure you guys are all set up for success as much as I can uh, but I'm probably going to cool my jets we'll, we'll see you probably back here at December 1st or December early in the week. Uh, Latent stream, can we drag rect alpha center to an area like an eye socket? Uh, I think so. I think so. Let's try. Let's go into our, oh, here's another thing too. Um, you can load tools from project and any of the projects that you're working from. Um, so in the Z projects folder underneath your demo projects or like the anime head. You can just load those up now as Z tools. You can load a Z tool from a project and it'll load in all your Z tools. Uh, but for here, if we wanted to go through here, oh, here's a, here's a fun brush. If you go into the comma key, go into brushes, and then we go in here to the miscellaneous, L-M-N-O, uh, wait, H-I-J-K-L-M, miscellaneous. There's a spherical brush, so you can go through here and you can kind of spherize these out and uh, <laughs> that's an interesting look so we'll go back to smooth stronger here and so now if we want to do a drag rect so let's say uh, standard brush drag rect uh, we'll do a star alpha and then we want to do maybe this and focal shift down and turn poly paint on so oh and also so now again we can turn alpha on or off here. So, but we want to drag from the middle. Well, it does drag it from the middle. But I suppose if you, oh, you know what? It's not in here. I was hoping square and center uh, when you're doing it on a brush would work, uh, but that seems to be just uh, control shift. Now you can mask 
um, go into here to mask rect and then in here you can say square and center and you can load up an alpha so you can kind of drag like so and then invert that and then you can like inflate and color uh, fill object you can kind of do that Uh, I don't have any geo data there, but you want to place it right there on the lips. Alpha drag centered. It, drag rec should do from the center, unless I'm mistaking something. Are you working now as a freelance sculptor? No, work at certain affinity. If you want a sneak peek into my work life, here's the ZBrush Summit 2018 demos. Actually, uh, let's do. ZBrush Summit 2018. Uh, yeah, use oh you know what? Let's just do this. This is this will be easier. Go to my profile here. Um, yeah, ZBrush Summit. If you go to the ZBrush Summit 2018 section, you can go through here. Here's the demo tutorial series. So there's 96 videos I did uh, based on my ZBrush Summit, which you can watch right here. And this kind of talks about what I do and how I do it at work. Video games. Uh, what stream days you usually do substance paint or hardly ever? I was going to do it today. Uh, we, I suppose we still can. Let's just, I get caught up in answering questions here. Let's load up substance painter and uh, we can actually, let's hop into move this around here. Let me. I think you need a little bit of V ray too. Go ahead and load up Maya. Uh, Tokyo, my wife just got back from there. She was uh, there yesterday, actually. She just got back in town. Her brother works in Japan. She got to meet up with him, but she did it if she was there for work purposes. But what's the best way to pose? Whoops. Hypershade's in the way. Um. What's the best way to pose a character you've used in Z Spheres to do this, or can you show? Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel and you just search for pose posing, um, it'll take take you through Z Spheres. I'm not a huge fan of using Z Sphere posing myself. I just use Transpose Master. Any available tools to make action figures joints or screw holes? There might be by now. There was a really cool ZBrush Summit presentation. As what toys presents. Um, read through the comments on here and maybe do a search. Uh, he did a really, really cool presentation uh, that goes all over like 3D printing type stuff and what type of plastics you use and what kind of joints you can use and why and um, range of motion stuff. Uh, 2019 Project Dynamesh needs to break old Dynamesh files where it locks the geo and doesn't do the operation. It's the purpose of the new. What is the purpose of the new is project? That I'm not sure. I would update to 2020. I haven't had, I'm on 20, actually the older version of ZBrush now is 2019.2. So if you can update, I would definitely do that. They might have fixed that if it's a, it's a, um, if it's a bug. Oh, let's say you have no geo and then it's like I want to drag rect in that area. You want to move the alpha via spacebar. Got you. Yes. So, uh, so we want to drag rect. Uh, but then move, so no, but uh, just like when we were doing the sp space bar with the masking, you can do it with a mask first and then drop it. Uh, you can also use something like, it's called the Brush Transpose Smart Math, Smart Mask, so we'll hit Y to go in here. And then if you um, load up an alpha and transpose Smart Mask, in fact, what I usually, oh, you know what, it's not gonna be in here, is it? Yeah, it's not, um, uh, big deal, so alpha, uh, it's an arrow. So here you can hold down control and when you drag this out you can actually move your use your space bar and like rotate around. It gives you a little bit more leeway to kind of go through and drop your mask. Now is it going to do... Um, oh, you can use drag dot but it's a little bit harder to control so you may have... yeah that's going to be an issue because yeah if you'd want to do like texture XYZ with this method um, it's not it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I wish I had a better answer for you for that. Uh, do you use a substance designer at work? No, I have a material team. I don't have one. Certain Affinity has a material team that does a lot of substance designer work. I usually just inherit what they work on. So, 
Any thoughts on Quixel Mixer now taking on Substance Painter? Um, <laughs> sure, it sounds cool, looks cool. Uh, if it ends up being cool, uh, I will use both. If, if it's a good tool, use it. Uh, now that I made a character bus, I don't know what I should do. Use should use for texturing for render now. The textures in Zbrush Poly Painter is that good enough for a badass render presentation, or should I use 3D coat substance or something else? Um, if you watched Raf Grassetti's presentation, it was all Zbrush renders and Zbrush sculpts. So if you think he's any good, uh, yeah, you can do pretty badass stuff in there. Now some of this I think was done in Arnold. Um, but at the end of the day, you can get really, really good renders out of ZBrush. You just got to know what you're doing. And it's not difficult. I don't mean to know what you're doing by like, oh, you have to know all these things. It's like, no, you just gotta, there's a couple ways you can kind of go through in Photoshop and kind of make it work how you want to. Yeah, he seems really cool. That Hasbro guy. Um, I, 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 that, was, that was probably my favorite presentation is watching that one. Um, I streamed on Pixel X channel yesterday and on Tuesday. Yeah, so I am. <laughs> yeah, she did. She always, she likes going to Japan. I'd say Japan and Germany are probably your top two places to go for work. Um, Texture X always easy, you got it, but help me with that smart transpose. Thanks. Yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. You could also consider using that morph UV maybe with the Texture XYZ stuff. Um, Oh, gotcha. So let's uh, let's hop back into Painter real quick. So what we were doing, if you go in here to um, recent, no, we want to go into samples. Yeah, there is a tiling material on here that you can go through and you can be like, okay, go into my layers. Let's go ahead and just delete all these out of here. We can add a, eh, you can add a new base layer or you can just drag it in. Texture settings, you can set this to like 4096. Uh, and then also in here, if you don't want to deal with the displacement, just go in here to displacement, tessellation, turn that off. <gasps> And if you wanted to put human skin on here, you can put like human back skin and it'll go ahead and tile this material for you. And then um, there's your skin and you can export this out as your height and your color. Uh, however, it might be easier because now this is like tiled four times already. So what you can do is you can go back, actually go back into ZBrush here. Let's go out of edit mode, hit control N. And we're gonna go in here to our plane 3D, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. We already know this has uh, UVs on it. So we can go ahead and just export this plane as to our, uh, let's store it on our desktop. Plane, oh god, it's already on there. And then we'll go in here and we'll go to File, New, select our plane OBJ, OK, discard. So now we have a plane in here that has UVs and we everything in here is gonna be tiling anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. So like I did before, if I wanted to just get like um, skin, just narrow this down to skin here and let's do um, there was one that was that was like okay, so mole is kind of interesting. If you want to grab, you know, let's grab something new. Substance source here. If it loads up, there we go. And we go in here to organic, and let's grab something gross. So we grabbed a mole out of here. Uh, infected cuts. Let's go ahead and grab that one. Oh none. Oops. Mm. Yes, thank you. Yes, I agree. There we go. Organic. Um, let's go get an infected cut, and let's go get a bed sore uh, mole we already have, and there's a bunch of skin in here you can just grab as well. So eh, that's fine. So we have those downloaded. So for example, if we want this bed sore, we can go through here and we can just drag this onto our document here. And now we'll have height and uh, color. And we'll also have like um, a lot more information as far as uh, roughness and stuff like that. But that, that, that's that stuff I don't need. So I'm gonna go in here to file, export textures, and we're going to grab just the base color and height. If you need to make your own base color and height, all you need to do is just go in here and say, make a new RGB, make a new grayscale, drag your base color into that one, drag your height into that one, and then you have a new export config 
and then uh, PNG should be fine. Um, you can do 49.6, uh, our document sending we had. I'm just going to set that at 24.8 just for demonstration purposes. And we'll just go ahead and throw that. Yeah, let's throw that in our demo here. Select our folder. And it's actually going to be default mat because that's how I have it set up, which is fine. And I'll show you how to change that in just a second. And then if we want to change that up, let's do this um, skin infected. I guess we could have just clicked. So we got this one here. And let's go ahead and change this default mat to skin infected file, export textures, skin infected. And this exact same process for like the elbow skin we did earlier. So, and that was 4096, that's fine. So let's go back into ZBrush here. And then uh, we were playing around with. our commander here, texture off. Uh, we were playing around with him yesterday. We unwrapped his head and then we um, used, let's drop this in the skin shader for render properties, wax preview, material modifiers, wax modifiers, hold that a string just a bit. Okay, so uh, we now have textures we can import. So yes, our last time what we did, or yesterday what we did, we did texture import. And then for example, we brought in like this female elbow skin base color, and then that alpha import, elbow skin, oops, import height. So you can bring in your height, you can bring in your color, and then both of those at the same time, let's go to the back here, uh, RGB Z add standard brush. So when you when you drag these out, you're going to get your height and your color at the same time. If you turn off, so when I drag this out, you're going to see um, in the recessed areas where it's darker, it's going to alpha out. So turn that off, and now you'll get all of your color information and your height information. You can turn that Z intensity down, and now you've got elbow skin. On that, you can also grab your mole height and your mole color. And again, alpha off, you can go through here and you can drag uh, your moles out. If you did have alpha on, any of the dark values in your alpha, which there's not a lot of them, uh, it would alpha them out. So you can go through there. Now, before you do this, you want to make sure your skin tones uh, are compatible. Um, now, we did just import, let's go to say, where we just did create, um, this this color here, goodness, and then this height as well, and then Z add. There we go. And then let's go ahead and crank that Z intensity up. So we can get, and then you also might have to play around with your mid value here, maybe a little bit. So let's go into our alpha brush and let's modify our mid value. Let's set that to 50. And then let's really crank that Z intensity up. Oh boy, that's really going in there. There we go. So set your mid value to like, it looks like 50 is the right mid value. And that way, when you're going through and you're dragging this out, again, make sure your skin tones are compatible. Um, you'll be able to get that height information and um, that skin information. So there's uh, painter stuff. And then as far as like V-Ray stuff, let's go in here to file open, recording patchy render setup. Let me get cut up here. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, there is a human face in there as well. You ever use old school box modeling in Maya Max Blender? Is all your mesh work done in ZBrush now? Um, yeah, I'll do box modeling. I'm using Blender more, uh, but I haven't really sat down and used it a lot, so I'm still kind of doing that. So uh, here is our render scene. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's hit the back bracket key. We can leave this camera alone. If we really want to leave this camera alone, we go over here and in the 
uh, view, select camera, we can say, you know what, let's go ahead and lock all that. So now if I go into this view, this is my perspective view here, and if we go in here to our V-Ray tab, we can say open up our VFB V-Ray frame buffer, and let's turn on, I'm going to do test resolution just to make it, because I'm working on a very limited uh, screen space here. So let's go in here and we'll do, uh, I'm going to right click here and we're going to do uh, perspective. That's going to follow my perspective camera around. Uh, so it's going to be our progressive render um, real time. So I can go through here and I can change materials, I can change lighting, and it'll show up in here just fine. So here's my render here, and so as I move my camera, you're going to see it's going to update so we can kind of get in here and kind of see uh, what, we got, what we got going on here, what we imported, and uh, I'll also. Let's go in here to our render settings. And in here, boy, I'm running out of real estate real quick, aren't I? Uh, underneath um, overrides here, going to camera, I'm going to turn off temporarily depth of field. There's two ways you can do depth of field. You can do a physical camera depth of field, or you can do the easier way for me, where you can turn on depth of field. And you can go, OK, so what do I want to focus the camera on in this shot? So I can go, OK. Uh, we have depth of field turned on. I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to say set focus point. I'm going to say I want to focus right on that eyeball. And then I'm going to turn set focus point off. And then as I go through here and change that aperture, um, you're going to see that's going to update my depth of field. So that's a little bit easier than the uh, physical camera one is to me. Uh, but I don't, I don't do it as often. So that's probably why it's easier. Um, but yeah, that's an easy depth of field. But we can go ahead and turn that off while we're just kind of running around here. And it's a very simple scene. Uh, if you want this lighting set up, uh, let me see if I have that for you. Um, let me see, let me see, let me get you his information. Uh, we can, you can do your own lighting, I'll show you that in just a second, but. Um, it is uh, Ian, Ian Rufus and uh, where is his, I want to make sure I send you to the right place, 32-bit studios. Um, you know, I'll just send you to his website. Demo real ways work. Uh, he has a really good, uh, he has a light rig that you can bring in, and that's just what I use for here. Mostly I did a little bit of tweaking on it. And then uh, also his Gumroad, you can check out, and uh, that's where that's where I got my stuff. So you can check that out. Um, Hugh, it's Maya. You can use, uh, so V-Ray, you can use with anything. Um, I use Maya because of the animation backbone. Um, it's kind of hard to beat Maya in the animation kingdom at the moment, but... Uh, anyway, so for example, if you kind of want to mess around here a little bit, let's go ahead. Uh, where can I put this stuff? Let's move it over here. And I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And so if we go in here, so we have a bunch of cameras in here. So let's go ahead and just get rid of all those. And then um, you can change the lighting. So if I do um, hide this one and show this one, it's going to change that lighting a bit. And also in here, I have a uh, rect light in here. So I can take this one. I can just move this thing around. This is actually what's lighting him specifically. Um, but if I get rid of all these light rigs and then uh, candlelight sphere, V ray, V rect, 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 rect. Boom. He is, uh, there's nothing in there except for a tiny little um, flame and then all my little um, polka dot guys. So let's go into Apache Assets here and let's turn off those fireflies for now. So um, just that flames lighting up inside of that glass here. So for instance, you can go through here and you can use Maya lights if you want to. So for example, you go in here to lights and you can do like a directional light. This is not super exciting. Oh, also another thing, we have this big uh, ramp back here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And then we'll go in here to create polygon primitives plane and we'll just scale that out. So uh, that'll just be a Lambert floor we can work with for now. Uh, but anyways, we have a directional light in here we threw in from Maya. Um, and actually, let's see, it should be working nicely. Yeah, we're doing okay. So uh, this is where <laughs> this is where a beefy CPU comes into play if you want to do any really intensive rendering. And also in your settings here, um, you can choose uh, memory limit. So I'm not going to limit it at all. So I put it at zero. And then also uh, somewhere in here, 
Uh, you can tell it to um, how many cores you want it to use, and I just set that to zero as well, so it can use as many as it needs to. Anyway, uh, so we have a directional light in here, and it's pointing from that direction, so I'm going to go ahead and, this is like a sunlight through here. Goodness gracious. Okay, I get it. Uh, hold on just a second, just in case that's important. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's business inquiry. Oh uh, boy. Okay, so uh, we have directional light in here, and um, there's some stuff you can do in here. Boy, this is going to be a nightmare. Um, let's go here to our, uh, we have this directional light selected. Let's go into Control A uh, to go into our uh, settings here. And uh, you can say illuminates by default. You can change the intensity of here. You can change the color. Uh, you can go into shadows here, and you can say, um, you can use ray trace shadows. You can change the uh, just just like in ZBrush. If you have a, a, a you know I can show you that. So we're in ZBrush here, and we do a let's turn on perspective, and we'll do a render. And you're going to say uh, these shadows are very sharp. You can go into your shadows underneath your render settings here, and they're here, and going in here under. Um, Render property shadows is turned on, so we are rendering shadows. We can go into shadow here. Uh, you can change your angle, and then as you hit BPR again, you're going to see as it gets further from your light source, it'll start to blur out a little bit. Exact same thing in here, where you can change this light angle to say like five, and you'll see that update. Ooh, that's quite a bit. Let's say one. So there you can see as it gets further away, uh, it'll from your object, it'll get a little bit softer. Um, Let's see, is there anything else? I mean, really the cool lights, uh, well, that's, I shouldn't say that. Uh, we can go in here to create. I would say if you're gonna use Maya lights, there's one thing you kinda need to keep track of, and that is your, um, for example, let's do a point light here. And this is just gonna be just kind of a light sitting down here, and you're gonna see these shadows just go on forever. So you're gonna wanna say, um, put on some decay onto that light. And then, oh, uh, can you guys even see that? Oh. So. Things going crazy now. You can, uh, you won't be able to scale this light up, uh, which you can in uh, the V-Ray version of this light. But you can say crank up that intensity up, and so now you have a light in here that you can kind of scooch around. And then you do have uh, decay turned on, and same thing in the shadows here. You can go through here and you can um, change some of this stuff. So let's say let's turn this down to like ten, and then. Uh, you change that light radius. There you go. You can kind of dial it in like that. Uh, however, probably what you're going to end up doing is using. Come on. Goodness gracious. Uh, the V ray lights. So we'll go ahead and here and create lights. Um, v ray sphere lights are very similar. It's basically, and this, you don't have to worry about decay or anything. It's just going to be a light here. Now, the bigger you make this, uh, the smaller you make this, it's going to be like just a little point in space. So your um, number one, it's not going to have a whole lot of strength and your shadows are going to be more blurry. Uh, are they going to be actually the opposite of that? They're going to be a little bit tighter in here. Now, if you make it larger, you're going to see because the actual volume of the light is getting larger, it's encompassing and it's wrapping around your object a little bit more. Um, and if you want to not see it in your object, you want to just have it available to you, you can go to invisible and then you can go through and you can kind of move this around. So now you can have a light in your scene and if you want to scale this down a little bit. And then, and then in here you can go to the intensity multiplier and you can kind of crank that up or down as needed. You can change the color. Um, you can say temperature if you want to do candlelight, something like 1800 maybe. And you can kind of do that. Um, so that's that kind of light. Uh, what else can we do? Crew lights here. Um, dome lights are cool. This is where you're going to do your HDR images. So we can go in here. And again, you can do intensity multipliers, all that kind of stuff. You can say use dome texture. And I think I've got some. I just add a file in here. I should have some. Um, uh, okay. Let me let me track down. I'm going to copy this into my favorites here real quick. Give me a second. Um, uh, reference library. Okay, go here. 
Let's see, this is my favorite here, reference library. There we go. And then in here I have some HDR images. Uh, I have also some light data we can talk about. Uh, that's the IES light data. We can make those lights if you want. Um, let's just go in here, sort by name. I don't know, I'm just going to take a stab in the dark here. Um, Newport Loft. Render. Let's throw that in there. Okay, so here's our loft that's lighting this scene now. So as we kind of rotate our camera around, you're going to see this is our loft that's visible. You can actually go in here again uh, with your dome light selected. And you can say options and you can say make it invisible and that'll make it so you can't see the environment around it. And then you can also go through here and you can say the intensity multiplier. You can crank that up a little bit. Uh, but we'll go ahead and keep that down. We'll, we'll use this to kind of create, uh, help us with our reflections and then also just provide a little bit of ambient fill and then we'll go through here. So we'll just go ahead and keep this at one. Um, if you want to rotate this around, it's not going to be as, well, it can be as simple as rotating your dome light, but it's not going to do anything. Let's go in here. I'm going to do, uh, go plot in and out with our dome light here and then under this environment texture here you have horizontal and vertical rotation. So now uh, if we go and we say horizontal rotation, that'll you're going to see it's going to update our lighting on the fly. And then uh, also you can turn on use transform. And now with that selected, you can go through here and you can use your rotate to kind of rotate that. Um, but if we go through here and we say create lights and we want to do a, um, I'm going to talk about dome light, rect light. So we can do a rectangular light. That's probably my favorite light. So we go through here. And we'll go ahead and rotate this around. That arrow, you can run, have it do a light on both sides, uh, but that arrow is going to indicate by default which direction it's going to go in. So just like the other um, lights here, you can say scale this up, and then you can make it invisible if you want to. Uh, but before I do that, I want to talk about, so there you go, there's our rectangular light. Um, however, to make this a little bit more realistic, you can go in here to your let me see if I need to scooch this out a little bit here. Uh, you can say use rect texture, and this is going to put a texture in here. So we're going to say put a file in there. It's going to turn off temporarily because it's going to be a black texture. It's loaded by default. Uh, but in here, I believe I have, um, it wouldn't be under HDR images. It would be under HIJKL for light, light maps. So in here, my light maps, uh, HDR, uh, single light arrays, 2K01. Um, actually, let's see if it loaded a preview for me. Yeah, so you can see here, I can actually map to that rectangle um, these types of lights to make them look uh, a little bit more realistic as far as like you're lighting this in an actual studio. So you can do like a light box here. Let's see, was it 04 or 02? Yeah, so if we go through here now and we kind of look at that and we say, Let's drop our intensity multiplier down by quite a bit. There we go. So now it's like we have a, uh, and then you, if you're doing stuff with it that it's really reflective, you'll have that kind of reflecting in. Uh, this was from a pack that I bought online. It was pretty expensive actually, but um, it comes in handy uh, if you're doing product rendering for sure. But um, yeah, we can put that back up to 20. And like I said, for reflections, I can kind of help. And again, you can go through here and you can go to options and you can say, uh, invisible. So that'll be in your scene, uh, but not doing too much. So let's go through here and let's go ahead and say, let's say, uh, and also like I, like I mentioned before, you can go through and you can make this uh, whatever size you want. Another thing you can do is you can go through here and you can say, make it directional. So you can kind of focus that light by using kind of like these little barn door looking things. Uh, and you can kind of focus where that light's uh, going to end up. You can kind of just blast it like this a direction, like so. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and say create polygon primitives sphere. I'm going to load this up right in front of them here. And then if we get into, actually, how are you guys doing? Um, oops, can I scroll in here? Uh, okay, I'm way behind, so sorry if I missed something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it seems like it's, okay, I'm going to put pause on there. 
uh, longer term personal project you're working on time time what's the largest longest personal project that'd probably be the ooh I, do, I don't work on things for very long like even that commander like I usually when I start like this thing this uh, patchy uh, project right here was a day it was probably five hours to sculpt it and three hours to render um, and apply materials and kind of mess around with that stuff um you need proper scale of the modeling my 3d software would help a lot yeah um this is i think yeah i think it is an ikea yeah it is that ikea desk for my video uh better get skin detail z tail z brush skin detail and to bake it down or get skin detail and substance painter substance painter would be less destructive z brush is more fun um I don't give very much time to work on my projects at all, um, especially personal projects. Uh, I don't really try using Motion Builder. Do you have any tips? Um, our animation team is awesome. Like at Certain Affinity, our animation team is nuts. So uh, they used the, they did the Motion Builder stuff. Uh, I'm very I'm I went to Ringling, was trained as an animator, and uh, 15 years of atrophy later, I'm not a very good animator. So I'd be the wrong guy to ask about that. Right on, Ubisoft Sweden, nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, ZBrush is easy for me to stream because it's I can do it really quickly, but um, any tips for rendering gray models want to create a new portfolio in primary modeler have little experience with texturing. Honestly, I would say uh, it's only going to help. Well, here's the thing. An excellent model can be absolutely destroyed by bad textures and bad materials and bad lighting. However, a very mediocre model, wink wink, like this one, can be saved by good materials, good lighting, good textures. So I would say honestly to like sell your product and sell yourself, get good at modeling. If I could go back in time and tell myself anything, I would say get good at presentation, get good at lighting materials and um, rendering. Um, there is absolutely mediocre models out there that look stunning because they were treated correctly. And I've seen some really good models out there with um, really terrible renders and lighting and materials, and it just kills them. It just makes them look really substandard. So um, not to say you should be a mediocre model modeler, uh, but definitely put a little bit of time into learning enough rendering and materials and texturing to get through um, really kind of selling your product. Uh, V-Ray and Maya because of the Maya backbone, the animation backbone in Maya. So if I'm going to animate anything, I'm probably going to animate it in Maya right now. Uh, and so it's just easier for me. But if you're just like a modeler and you just want to render in V-Ray with your whatever modeling package you want or standalone, then by all means. Uh, why not Redshift? Yes, Redshift, Octane. Uh, if you want some Octane stuff, there's some Octane stuff on my channel. Um, uh, it, well, Redshift is also going to be limited by your GPU memory. So if you ever bring in anything, I have 128 gig of memory, but I only have 12 gig of memory on my graphic card 1080 Ti. So uh, when you're doing GPU rendering, you can, and also um, GPU rendering can have some really, really weird issues with like particles. Um, some certain types of materials won't render correctly with the GPU. So, you know, um, but that's not to say you can't or shouldn't use them for by all means absolutely it's just oh it's better with arnold to make the installer render on top if you want to install something else why it's v-ray and not arnold uh you can use both here's here's your arnold render is built in um i use v-ray because i was doing v-ray when i was doing product rendering or while i'm doing product rendering that's what the production house was using so i just learned it but there's nothing wrong with arnold uh keyshot 9 real cloth feature looks promising i haven't tried it yet um. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a fanboy of anything. Like, if if you guys love Redshift, you guys love Octane, uh, by all means, use it. They're all great. And you know what? They're all the same. There's not a damn bit of difference between any of them. Uh, that's that's kind of the point, I suppose, is that if you're talking about like photo rendering, if you want photorealism, why don't you use this? Well, why don't you use anything? Um, they're all easy. Uh, just like box modeling to me. It's like, oh, if you want to be a good box modeler, you have to use 3D Studio Max. I heard that for a long time. Um, and now if you want to be a good box modeler, you have to use uh, Blender. Of course, 
or you know the videos that come out that are like oh zbrush is only used for sculpting and i'm like okay did, are you gonna tell chi vang that no of course not you look kind of foolish making blanket statements about anything really um just because you can say something and then immediately there's going to be 50 examples of somebody going well actually if you look at all of these examples um, that's not true at all so really yeah use whatever you want cool uh, i was a principal artist uh, i'm a director of character art now so i'm management so i'm slowly fading into irrelevancy as we as we speak uh, worth upgrading from ZBrush 2019 to ZBrush 2020 with all the new features considered. Uh, well, it's free to upgrade, so there's that. Unless you're using cracked version, in which case, uh, you know, that's a different story. So if you got a subscription, you're upgraded. If you got a perpetual license, you're upgraded. So yeah, there's no reason not to upgrade. Unless, of course, uh, your situation is a little bit different. So. Uh, in here we have, uh, you can do any kind of materials here, but we can go ahead and just throw in a V-Ray material. And then on here, we'll go ahead and assign that V-Ray material here. And then we can play around with these settings a little bit. Uh, so you can go through here, you can change your diffuse color. I'm gonna go make this a little bit, uh, we'll say darker. And then the reflection color, we can go ahead and make that really shiny and reflective. And reflection glossiness, all that good stuff. Uh, you can turn up metalness uh, which will kind of chrome it out, but you're also going to want probably want to change your index of refraction. Uh, if you change your refraction color to white, that'll make it more of a uh, glassy surface here. Um, but the refraction IOR, I think if we go up here, uh, we can lock the Fresnel to the refraction IOR. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And then we'll go down here and we'll say change this up to like the, I want to say, Oops, not the refraction IOR. The bump, 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 fog multiplier, glossiness, metalness, Fresnel IOR. There we go. Uh, you can break that and you can turn that up a little bit, get a little bit more of a metal look here. And then, um, like I said, you can unlock, you can lock the Fresnel to the end of refraction the refraction IR, or you can unlock it, and then when you're in here in the refraction area, uh, you can change that refraction IR to be a little bit higher. You can actually probably over crank this if you wanted to. So, yeah, get some cool stuff going there. Uh, let's go ahead and say, uh, and then all of this was just basic like V ray materials in here. So, this in here, and then in, inside of here, I just tiled uh, tiling alpha for my. Let's go ahead and turn that UV off. So in here, I think if I go to V-Ray Body Cloth, we have a diffused color that's plugged in from ZBrush. This is my ZBrush color. And then down here underneath the bump, we just tiled in a uh, fabric pattern. So I just get that tiling fabric. This is all, all these little strings on here are your um, nano mesh that's in there. And then all of this in here. So essentially that's, that's the basic setup of this. And then, of course, if you want to render, um, and I wouldn't say like Redshift is easier to use, Octane's easier to use, V-Ray is easier to use. Like V-Ray is probably the easiest render I've ever used in my life. Like if you're having a hard time with V-Ray, it's all kind of dialed in for you. There's a lot of settings in here, but as far as like how to set up materials and lights and plug stuff in, um, I don't find it tremendously difficult. Unless, uh, I mean, I'm sure it, it can. You can get really deep into it if you needed to. Uh, but here's your GI settings. It's pretty straightforward, man. Um, oh, another thing in here you can set up. So here we go. We have these uh, the V-Rate Dirt that I'm also kicking out uh, that you can go through here. Uh, and you can set those up um, under your render elements here. Or you can set up all these. These are all, I don't think it adds too much to your render time, if anything. It's going to render that stuff anyway. So you can just drag those in here for your clown pass or whatever. And then you can render these out. Uh, for me personally, when I'm rendering, I'll do an open. Uh, so for example, you can also change your render. Here, hold on just a second. So go through here and we can say uh, common. Here's the name. Image format. I'm going to I do EXR multi-channel. So it goes and spits all my channels out into one version of the file. Makes it a little bit easier. I want to go do any um, comping. And we'll say here. I'm going to just go ahead and render this at half size. You can also, oh, down here. 
Uh, you can turn on history. So you can go through here and you can go ahead and save things to history. You need to turn this on to make it available. And then you can say, you know what, let's go ahead and clear these out here. So if you wanted to do different uh, settings in here, so like say you wanted to, I got one version here that is, uh, let's go ahead and let this render in just a bit. Oh, that's another thing too, is with this turned on, the follow mouse, you can, wherever your mouse moves is where it'll render, where it'll focus its rendering first. So you can go ahead and save that image. And then uh, we can go ahead and make a change to this material maybe. Um, let's, let's do something obvious. And I'll go ahead and let that render in real quick. And then we can say, save it. So now, uh, if we want to, we can compare these two images. We can say this one is going to be A, this one is going to be B. And now you can drag this back and forth. Any change you've done, you can see the reflection off of here uh, as well. So that's then the string and the ball kind of being dialed in there a little bit. Um, so there's that. Um, anything else in here? There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do in here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that history off these buttons are small and oh yeah so if I'm going to render this thing underneath your render settings here you can change it to be uh, you can do CPU you can do GPU uh, you can do progressive or bucket um, but if you were just to render this thing out um, I can show you the EXR I'll go ahead and let that render real quick I'll get cut up uh, let's see And then, yeah, uh, Houdini is also another really, really cool program. Have a super I'll see your test drive, another software fill, that's kind of cool streaming. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, God, it would be so boring, though, watching me just kind of fiddle. I, I, I assume it would be. That's the only reason I don't do it. I'm happy to sit there and fiddle. But I just don't think the audience would be very big, maybe. I have any specific recommendations for V-Ray tool tutorial documentation? Their, their actual documentation, I have my V-Ray user manual. Their user manual is pretty good. So here's my user manual documentation. Oh, if you're exporting from Substance Painter, if you want to render stuff from Substance Painter into V-Ray, um, it's this link. Uh, copy the link URL. You can go check this out. Um, so if you bring in a Substance Painter texture, your diffuse reflection gloss hits the hour on normal. And by that, I mean when you go in here and you go to File, Export Textures, and your configuration is set to V-Ray. Uh, and you go into your configuration here for V-Ray. Um, you're basically, oops. You're going to get a diffuse reflection gloss hits the hour height, normal, and emissive. When you bring those into Maya, and you want to, or you bring those into V-Ray, and you want to render them, uh, make sure when you're plugging in your colors, like your reflection goes in your reflection, your diffuse goes in your diffuse. Um, where did I put my notes here? Uh, diffuse goes into diffuse color, reflection goes in reflection color, glossiness goes in reflection glossiness, IOR goes in Fresnel IOR, and then make sure you turn your, like your diffusion reflection to sRGB, and then your uh, glossiness IOR normal into raw. So what that means is when we go over here, and say, for instance, this one has a diffuse color plugged in. So we go to diffuse color, um, sRGB, and then raw, if you need raw, is right here. So that's where you're going to change that to get that to render correctly. Um, so we save that image. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. Uh, to open up multi-channel EXRs, oh boy, where did I get that? Something I downloaded. Um, just Google, like, Photoshop multi EXR open. Are you serious? Photoshop, come on, man. You're killing me. Yes, hold on, everybody. Uh huh, it's me. I use this thing every day. Thank you. Two step verification, of course. Hmm. 
no, I don't want no mobile notifications. That's why they lock me out, so I can sign up for their mobile notifications. Anyways, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to images, and um, so I got my images in here. So I'm going to just grab, drag this EXR right in here and hit open. And now I've got all of my channels in here, and I can actually that probably wasn't was that what I was working on? I don't remember. But anyway, it would be just like this. You can take this and you can set this to um, multiply, and you can grab this one. You can make this a little bit smaller. Of course, while you're doing this, uh, it's going to come as a 32-bit. So if you don't need all that image mode, you can drop it down to 16. Don't merge, and um, all that good stuff. So in fact, probably what I would do first is just drag in. So three quarters. No master layer. Okay, that's what we're working on. So here it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to image mode. Say 16 bits. Don't merge. And then I'll go ahead and take this one here. And then we'll just say uh, multiply, and then you can, you know, do it. Do it your normal Photoshop stuff you'd want to do, and you can save that out as whatever you'd like. Uh, Houdini tutorials tried it, but it fails so hard. Yep. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel here, there's a Houdini. I mean, it's a little bit dated now, but you can go to. Um, Somewhere in here is a oh playlist. Go to your playlist. Go to the playlist section. Then Houdini Game Dev Toolset. That's two hours worth of Houdini walkthrough. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Art and Time. Yeah, the bias and unbiased renders. Um, all that good stuff. So, uh, but again, for what my I usually use it for. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary, but um, I can improve my presentation skills. Is there a course about it? Oh, uh, the V-Ray. Um, that was 32-bit studios. Uh, just do 32-bit studios V-Ray, and then I'll bring up some V-Ray stuff. Uh, improve my presentation skills. Is there a course about it? Oh, God, probably. Um, God, I'm, I'm racking my brain. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Off the top of my head, I don't know of any. Um, but yeah, there probably is. All right, everybody. It's it's way past my streaming stop time, so thanks, everybody. I'll catch you guys probably first Tuesday of the month. I'll be back on Pixelbook's channel, and then first Thursday of the month, I'll be back back on. So anyway, cool. Take it easy, everybody, and uh, have a good rest of your week.